Sky couldn't make it, and that is your ball game. The Skyhawks are going to the playoffs. And away pass is intercepted by Aaron Arrington. 45 40, 30, 20. Aaron Arrington, take him home. And a step up, and a touchdown. Ladies and gentlemen, you're looking at the new SFL rushing record leader. Has caught first half. What about they are seven? Get out of here. The doctor is in for the touchdown. Disrespecting St. Louis inside the 15 and down to the 10. His mama felt that one. He is going to go for it. Wavy Jr.'s pass is caught. Oh, my goodness. Pass is caught by Prince Escobar. He's going to go. A.J. Barnes has changed the facet of this game by scoring on a punt return. Tallahassee takes the lead back. Welcome to Tallahassee, Florida, the Lion's Den in a very humid and muggy 85 degree night in Tallahassee in North Florida. The Eastern Conference Final is upon us. I'm Cameron Irvine, joined by James Richards, producer at Axis Football and here for his second ever SFL game as commentator. How you doing, James? I'm doing great. I, I just want to say thank you for having me and, and everybody thanks for being so great in the chat. Uh, it's been an awesome experience. Tallahassee trying to get to the championship game for the first time in team history. Queen City trying to get there to win their fourth title. They already hold the SFL record for three. They're going for a fourth coin toss is right now on the field. A.J. Caswell, a team captain, along with Alexander Shiatovich, Marcus Salambos, and Ed Ritter. Queen City wins the toss and will kick. Interesting Your decision. Defense out there on the field first. I'm a little surprised by that. I am as well. Both of these teams, Cam, rely heavily on the offense. Tallahassee coming in with the number one points per game offense at almost 38 points per game. Queen City coming in at number two uh, with 32 points per game. So the ball's on the tee. Queen City will kick off. Kick it. We're underway. It's the Eastern Conference Final from the 10-yard line. A.J. Barnes on a return. Boy, did he sure take over the game uh, last week against Carolina. Not a return touchdown there. It'll be first and 10 at the 31 for potential MVP candidate E.T. King. Yeah, E.T. King's been phenomenal all season long. Uh, the league's number one passer, I believe. Uh, and that's one of the big uh, keys to victory for Tallahassee. Let King do what King does. So three receivers off to the uh, left side and only one corner out there covering already. Uh, maybe a bit of a mismatch out there. If King can get the ball quickly out, it's Tom Menander. Pickup of eight yards. And a solid start for this Tallahassee offense. We expect to see plenty of points here tonight between the Corsairs and the Pride. Yeah, Queen City coming in with the 13th best scoring defense in the league uh, with a passing defense that's 14th, allowing 330 yards per game. Second and two, just getting underway from Tallahassee in the Eastern Conference Final. King changing the play at the line. With Kim in the backfield, King will pass again. And King quickly to the outside, caught by Tom Menander, picks up a first down to the 45-yard line. And, uh, you know, really for Queen City, it's all about picking their poison. Tallahassee, the number one scoring offense in the league. And you don't want to give up big plays, but you don't want things to be too easy for the Pride either. Yeah, I think stylistically this is a tough matchup for Queen City. E.T. King averaging 372 yards per game. And... And they don't have a star corner on their roster. There's not a single person defending the top of the screen. And King steps up in the pocket, goes that direction wide open. Great great protection there. E.T. King stepping up in the pocket to avoid the outside rush by the defensive end. Threw a beautiful ball there to the wide receiver. Jared Cochran was standing out there. I mean, there was nobody within five yards of him. I can't well, believe that. And that's what we're talking about. There was, two, there was two defenders there, the safety over top and the corner chasing it down, but the corners, they're not star corners, so you're going to see a lot of that potentially. Uh, first down, uh, second down and 10. Oh, did they, did they say that was out of bounds? They might have. I didn't see it. That's really surprising. I thought for sure 
that that was a catch. Jay Calvin Kim is going to be stood up in the line of scrimmage. James, I am scratching my head at like... I thought he le at least got one foot in. I I thought he at least got two foot in. <laughs> I didn't even think it was close. Uh, maybe uh, Frank should have challenged that one. I'm not sure. What just happened? I don't... I mean, I was just going about my business. La, 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 la. Like, like that was... That is truly bizarre. I want to see if anybody else in the chat... Maybe I missed something. Third down and ten now for Tallahassee. Empty set for King. Back to pass. King all day to throw. Caught first down. If his offensive line is going to give him that time of time, uh, type of time, rather, uh, Queen City's going to be in trouble. Yeah, no, no question about how many feet he got in that time. Uh, wide open. <laughs> Had about five yards after the catch to really make something happen. Uh, some of the the uh, the Queen City keys to victory are going to be very similar to Alaska. They need to keep E.T. King and the Tallahassee Pride off the field. They're going to need to control the ball with uh, with uh, the young Bose uh, tailback. King back to pass. We'll get back to some more keys in a moment. Pass just over the head and breaking a tackle. Here's a, a fullback or a tight end out there. I'm not sure which. First down of the course there, 28-yard line as King's pass gets over the top of the defense. If this is indicative of how their defense is going to play all night, they're going to need to put up a ton of points. Uh, hopefully history does not repeat itself in this instance. In week 14, Tallahassee won pretty handedly 59-14. to Hate to bring that up, but they shut down Bose, and E.T. King had eight passing touchdowns. Yeah, that game was really brutal for the Corsairs. King back to pass. King looking short, really good coverage down the field there by Queen City. Thought they uh, backed off nicely in, in the coverage as uh, Kim picks up two. You know what I'm I'm most interested in is they have three star linemen and none of them are generating pressure so far. Here on the first drive, E.T. King's had the cleanest pocket we've seen out of today's game right. so far. Right, no doubt about it. They have, they are not stepping up to the challenge here on this first series. Inside the 30-yard line, Kim gets his first carry of the drive, and Espen Real is all over that. The former Cleveland Viper is brought down, and it's going to be third and 10 Tallahassee. And now the question for Queen City is, can they get off the field? If they can get a stop here and then, you know, hand the ball over to Bose and really run the ball well, that's, that's going to be ideal here. Jay Calvin Kim had a really nice day against Queen City in their first meeting. Not off to a good start. Third down and ten. Queen City looking for a stop. King back to pass. Has to float it out. Wacky looking play. Lost two yards. That's J.J. Allen who had to come back for the ball. It's almost like he, it looked like he stole it from Jay Calvin Kim. Fourth down. <laughs> yeah, it, it even looked like it was E.T. King trying to throw it out of bounds. And yeah. Just, you know, get him in position for the field goal. But the, the receiver, great catch. Just terrible catch catch in the same breath that's one of those balls you'd rather him just not catch at all howland trying to be a hero there yeah. right there. a little bit too much so this is going to be a 47 yard field goal for tallahassee a good start to the day defensively for queen city they'll take field goals all day out of the pride high snap from the left hash the left footed kicker from 47 yards out and that field goal is no good he missed it wide right and Queen City gets a full stop on their first uh, possession defensively. Yeah, that's that's huge for Queen City. And, and like I mentioned earlier in the game, offensively, this this next drive, Cam, this is going to be telling of how the, the rest of the game is going to go. If Queen City can eat a ton of clock off, maybe get a couple points on the board, that's that's the best start that they could hope for. And and that, that field goal is tough for any non-star kicker. 47, definitely not a gimme. A.J. Caswell out on the field now for the Corsair offense, going to work in the passing game to start. Alexander Chantovich makes a catch for an eight-yard gain, and something we uh, might want to focus on as the game goes along, there was there was literally nobody on this left side of the field, and they ran an in route. Um, be interesting to see what is all open today for the Corsair offense. Yeah, and, and Queen City's no slouch on offense either. They're they're literally right behind Tallahassee in, in the yards per game with 443. Two in the backfield, handoff to Bose. Bose has a first down. A.J. Barnes with the tackle to the Queen City for the Tallahassee, rather, 49-yard line. Queen City gets the first on Marcus's first carry. Yeah, so I think the big... Uh, keys to this game, really, right? So Tallahassee's coming in with the number one passing game. Queen City's coming in with the ninth best passing game. Uh, rushing offenses, Tallahassee 10th. 
Where is Queen City's number one on the legs of Bose? Caswell, deep ball down the field. Caught by Shantovich at the 28-yard line. And one-on-one -on -one coverage against Ashley Odom, the only star corner in this game. Shantovich makes a brilliant catch. Yeah, they're moving the ball really well. I'm just concerned that they're moving it too quickly. Uh, you, you really can't give E.T. King a ton of time and a ton of possessions because eventually he's going to score. So... Interesting note here, Tallahassee comes in with the 12th ranked pass defense. So almost last in the league. Bose takes the handoff, and Marcus Allen Bose picks up a strong seven yards. Also, a uh, fact to note, Queen City has never lost in an Eastern Conference final. They're 3-0 and all time, and of course that, that got them to the championship games where they have never lost in the title game. Yeah. Their coaching staff knows how to, to come up in big games. I think they've proven that year in, year out. So if they get in a position uh, where it comes down to a coaching decision, I have, I have full faith that Queen City will definitely put themselves in a good position. Second down and three. Caswell going to hand off to Bose again. Again, he gets a really nice block off the outside. And uh, the, the outside blocking for Queen City has been stellar so far. Another first down. Yeah, Bose... He's a nightmare. Uh, in, in week 14, they bottled him up for 80 yards, and, and Kim actually outrushed him with 104. But this kid's phenomenal. He set the league record for rushing. Like, come on. Three receivers for the bright green striped socked Corsairs, and the handoff goes to Bose again up the middle. Again, he made a man miss. Picked up just a couple, though, as Tallahassee does a nice job up the gut. Second down and eight. Yeah, it'll be interesting. I mean, like I said earlier, Tallahassee's coming in with the fourth-ranked rushing defense in the league. So stylistically, this is a bad matchup for Queen City, but they're moving the ball. 4 6 to go first quarter. Caswell again outside to post. This time, Tallahassee all over it. That's A.J. Barnes, loss of two, third and ten. Yeah, good play there by the Tallahassee defense. You can definitely tell that Tallahassee's ready for that outside stretch. They, they haven't gotten there like they did on that play uh, for much of the night until Barnes was able to close them down there. Third down and ten. At the backfield, five wide for Caswell. He needs just beyond the seven-yard line. Caswell back to pass against a blitz. Caswell down the middle of the field. Caught touchdown! Alexander Shayatovich and Queen City's on the board. Great first drive by Queen City. This is exactly what they need to do. Uh, a little concerned that they put up points too quickly, but against Tallahassee, just getting points is, is super important. So you, you'll take it whenever you can get them, no matter how quick the drive is. Great first drive by Queen City, getting down there to put up six. And a really nice first uh, drive from Alexander Shayatovich. He had three catches on that drive. In fact, he was the only player uh, for the Corsairs uh, to catch a ball on that opening series. Extra point pending for Queen City. Good snap, good hold. Kick is perfect, and the Corsairs on the road. Up 7-0 over Tallahassee after just a couple of weeks ago getting absolutely drummed. Yeah, I mean, it, it feels pretty similar to how last uh, the, the last meeting went. You know, it was a pretty low-scoring game up until the third quarter, and then Queen City, you know, the rest was history. They kind of blew them out. So it'll be interesting to see if they can put together full a full four-quarter game because that's what they're going to need to knock off Tallahassee. Barnes from the 12, and they cannot let this man get free. And Barnes will be wrapped up at the 32-yard line. In a game like this where you need just about everything to go right for you, uh, having an A.J. Barnes big kickoff or punt return would be unacceptable tonight. Right. Yeah, Queen City has to play a near perfect game. Uh, I mean, but Tallahassee can't get they can't get behind either because, you know, we, we see how hard it is to put up points in this league when you're behind. So they just have to stay calm, play their play their game, but you know, they gotta put points up. Queen City showing blitz, they all back off. Four man rush and Menander with a stiff arm. Oh, still in bounds. Got the first down of the forty four yard line. They may want to check that spot. It was the far sideline, so we had a tough angle. Yeah, both of these defenses are looking fairly spotty in, in passing defense. Uh, and that's that's pretty true to their M.O. 
Uh, like I mentioned earlier, 12th uh, in pass yard defense for Tallahassee, 14th for Queen City. So they're playing pretty true to, to what the stats say about them. I think that was actually a really good call on Menander down the sideline. He uh, did not, in fact, step out of bounds. First down and 10 for King and the Pride with 3.05 to go in the first quarter. King will hand off to Kim on a counter out of the shotgun. He's in big trouble, and somehow Kim got back to the line of scrimmage, the most impressive zero-yard gain you'll see all night. Yeah, Kim's Kim's one of those, he's not real known for his rushing, uh, but he's very quick, very elusive runner, uh, makes a lot of good plays in the passing game. Uh, if you give him run, uh, if you give him room in the run game, though, he will torch you. Second down and 10 coming up for Tallahassee, down 7 nothing at home here in the East Final. Hand off to Kim, and Kim is put down easily by the league's all-time leading tackler, D.J. McCoo. Third and 10. Yeah, Queen City putting themselves in really good positions here. Uh, they're bending slightly early in the drives, but then they're they're straightening up real quick, and they're putting you know uh, Tallahassee in a lot of third and longs. They got off the field last time on a third down and ten with uh, Kim, or with King rather, in the empty set. Can they do it again? Three down linemen for the Corsairs. Back to pass on a high snap. King rushed the throw a little bit. It's short of the first down, and Queen City gets the stop. I'm really surprised that E.T. King even threw that ball as Ray, uh, Real makes the tackle, fourth and three. Yeah, it looks like Queen City's playing a, a deep cover two or maybe even a cover four, and so they're just taking away all the deep plays and uh, forcing E.T. King to dunk it down. So Tallahassee will punt it away, and I, I, I got to admit, James, I'm, I'm a little stunned right now what I'm looking at here. Yeah, and this is exactly the start Queen City needed against Tallahassee. We know at some point, as Haynes returns it up to the 13, like we know, and I think everyone at home knows, that at some point, like Tallahassee's going to shake out of the rut, right? Like they, they're the number one scoring team in the league. They're going to figure it out. So what kind of buffer can the Corsairs give themselves? Uh, I think they just, well, if they score on this drive, then uh, they just need to, keep playing and keeping everything in front of them. They can't let Tallahassee burn them on a big play. They just need to keep eating the clock and, and keep moving the ball down the field. The backfield, Caswell back the pass over the middle, pass complete. Gain of four yards as Jones Branch uh, makes his first catch of the day, second and six. Yeah, I, I also think uh, Tallahassee is going to have a hard time shutting down Bose all game. I mean, the, the performance that they put on week 14, that, that's hard. He, he's proven that he tends to bounce back, you know, after poor rushing games. Second and six, Corsairs up seven. Again, empty backfield for Caswell. Back to pass. Rush nearly got there. Oh, and Branch dropped the uh, pass. He's been targeted on back-to-back -back plays, the generic receiver, when you've got arguably the best receiver out on the field um, in, in, in SFL history in Jake Legacy, who hasn't even gotten a target. Yeah, you got to catch those, especially in games like this where you're expecting, you know, a shootout. It's still a seven-point game. Uh, Queen City needs a lot of things to go right for them early uh, if they want to put themselves in a position to win this ball game. They're down and six again. Empty backfield. No posts at all on this drive so far. Back to pass. Caswell going long. Pass is caught down the sideline. He, oh, he stepped out of bounds. He stepped out of bounds at the Tallahassee oh 49. I thought Hayes was gone and go in the distance. He could not stay in bounds. What a throw. I mean, great catch to even stay in bounds and pick up the extra yards that he did. But, I, you know, once you get the catch, you you got to redirect yourself and get upfield. Uh, he, he, great, great throw, great catch, but you would have liked to see him stay in bounds there. Well, he did get upfield, and, and then he stepped out. You don't see that often very much either. Empty set with four wide casts while changing the play. Queen City, a, a lot of passing, and it's a drop for a loss of four. Yeah, good pressure up the middle there by Foreman. Kendrick Foreman getting involved. Defensive tackle number 95 outside of Floyd Lee and Bull Bukowski. Bukowski, the former Dallas lawman, could potentially be facing his former team in the title game. Tallahassee can advance, as would Bones Malone and Pete Sicord. 82 yards and a perfect quarterback rating for Caswell on a second and 14. 22 seconds to go in the first. 
two wide receivers. Shayatovich is at the bottom of the screen. Bose now back into the game, and Bose will take the pass. Bose in the open field will be wrapped up and double covered. That is Secord and Malone, and that is the end of the first quarter of play. Your score, Queen City 7, Tallahassee nothing. A.J. Barnes and this pride defense is going to have to get to work. Pride down a touchdown. You know, Cam, the biggest thing I'm surprised about in this first quarter is how much respect Tallahassee's given the Queen City passing game. Uh, right now, you're seeing them press, but the last couple plays, they've been in, uh, they've been off the ball, giving them a lot of room. Caught third and 11, Jake Legacy 10, five, touchdown, Queen City! Yep, now I see why they were giving them so much room. <laughs> Wow, just a, just a whiffed play by, I believe, Ashley Odom. And the second quarter starts with a bang for Queen City, and I think James has fainted. Yeah, I... <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure here. I like, just like in the first game, you know, both teams are kind of getting away from what they do. I mean, Queen City runs the ball. They're the number one rushing team. Uh, they're ninth in the passing game, but here they are. They're out passing the number one passing team in the league. They are out gaining the number one offensive gaining team in the league. So it's really shocking here. But, you know, this is exactly what Queen City needed. Uh, I think, uh, you know, Frank's one of those guys. He'll figure it out, you know, and they'll, they'll adjust and, and reel it in. But they're going to need to do it sooner rather than later because Queen City can and will put points up as well. They're right behind Tallahassee in points per game. Yeah, two top scoring teams in the SFL on display tonight. We saw a very defensive game in Alaska, or I'm sorry, in Dallas, with Dallas and Alaska uh, earlier this afternoon. We also uh, saw a plenty of points put up in this stadium last week as Barnes is gang tackled at the 30 um, when the Tallahassee beat Carolina 59-37. That game uh, took quite a while to hit zeros. Yeah, Tallahassee's not a stranger to putting up a, a bucket full of points, but tonight, Queen City, at least in the, the first quarter there, they're, they're really playing a good ball game. Queen City not getting pressure, but they have limited Tallahassee's ability to get the big play. First and 10 for the Pride. 10.40 to go in the first half. Shockingly down 14-0 as Howland turns the corner and gets hit at the 41-yard line. Good enough for a Tallahassee first down. I, I think we're going to see this often. I think Queen City is going to play off, and Tallahassee is going to have these out routes all day. And so as long as they, they stop trying to go up top, and uh, they just take what Queen City gives them. They're going to stay on the field. They're going to burn some clock. They're going to slow down this Queen City offense. Tallahassee's got a first down and 10 at the 41. King hands off to Kim. And Jay Calvin Kim for the first time tonight has some burst in his step. Picks up seven. Yeah, it looks like uh, it's going to be a rough time running for both teams. Uh, Bose hasn't really done much. Uh, Kim Kim's not really known to, to outrun anybody. He's, he's more prolific in the passing game. Uh, but, you know, found a little room there and had a nice run. Second down and three. Two backs, two receivers hand off to Kim. Kim's got a first down and more. Jake Calvin Kim tackled only by Espen Real at the Queen City 33 to move the chains. And that's, that's what I mentioned earlier. He's not known to run through you, but give him a little bit of room off the corner there, and he will take off. Kim nearly tackled there, just hurtled the uh, body of the defender that had been laying on the ground thanks to a nice block off the outside, and Tallahassee starting to get the offense moving now. 25 yards on five carries for Kim. Two receivers. Cochran a bit quiet here. Howland starting to get heated up. Two receivers, two backs for King. Queen City brings everybody, and Kim is brought down for a two-yard gain. Corsairs were all over that. Richie with the tackle, second and eight. Yeah, it looked like if Kim would have got past Richie there, he would have had a lot of daylight. Nine minutes to go in the first half. Corsairs up two scores. As Tallahassee tries to uh, figure out what the Corsairs are bringing them tonight. King 
Pass caught Howlin. That is pitch and catch. Easy football for Tallahassee. That's what we saw a lot of against Carolina. First down to the 22-yard line. And that's 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 where they're going. These are the plays that Queen City's going to give them. They're going to give them everything underneath, and then they're going to hope that Tallahassee's players make a mistake, drop the ball. Uh, their quarter, E.T. King, overthrows them. You know, they're just banking on these little mistakes by Tallahassee and hoping that those add up. Three receivers for King. Back to pass. Bump and run coverage at the line, and that pass is ruled incomplete. No huddle offense on an incomplete pass from the pride here as we see teams uh, fairly semi-off and go up-tempo offense even after an incomplete pass. King all day to throw. It's nearly intercepted. Third down and ten. Yeah, three defenders back there guarding that. That was just a really bad decision by E.T. King there. King is he's trying to force the ball down the field, it would seem. It doesn't seem to be working. Third down for Tallahassee. King in trouble. Oh, he spun right into a vicious hit from Ed Ritter, fourth down for the Pride. And this is exactly what Queen City wants. They'll bend, but they won't break, and they're waiting for Tallahassee to make the mistakes. We saw E.T. King on first down, throw it out of bounds, uh, basically. It was a catch for no gain. Then uh, we just saw that, 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 that uh, second and ten, where he threw it into triple coverage, and then we just saw the sack right there. And that's, that's exactly how Queen City wants every drive for Tallahassee to go. Boy, anytime you see your MVP spinning in the open field, you're like, no, stop it. Just stop it. 43-yard field goal for the Pride trying to get on the board. Lefty kicker missed his first. That one is good from officially 42. 7.30 to go in the first half. It's 14-3. Yeah, it, it seems like 45 is the magic number for not uh, for kickers. Basically, if it's if it's 45 yards or less, there's a pretty good chance that they'll make it. Anything past that, we saw the 47 yarder missed earlier in the game. Uh, so that that that's a good good field goal there, and and Tallahassee getting on the board. They needed that. Tell Houston that <laughs> kickers magic numbers like nine. I think that was mine as well. I missed. I, I shanked a couple kicks this season. That's right. Yeah, that's right. We should talk about that. We should. We should talk about that a little bit. It. it first time I got back to Baltimore in a while. I loaded up on crab ca crab cakes. A little bit greasy. Uh, the ball slipped off my foot. Now wait a minute. Wouldn't that affect your hands? Please, just, please. I mean, I eat with. I eat with greasy. my feet. What can I say? I'm a monkey. First down for Queen City. We learn something new every day. Yep. 7.25 to go in the first half. Corsairs have scored, I believe, on their first two possessions. Is that true? I believe so. Two out of two as uh, Caswell and company try to make it three out of three against this Tallahassee defense. Hand off to Bose and that first block. And the second block is made and Bose is to the 45-yard line. For that play to work for Bose, it's all about that first block. Yes, I, I think too he's getting outside, Damn. and that's not the matchup. I mean, Bose, I, I saw a play where he trucked two linebackers and two safeties, and then stiff armed a corner and took it 80 yards. <laughs> I mean, and so you definitely don't want Bose on the outside against your one on one with a corner and safety. That's a matchup you'll probably lose nine out of ten times. First and ten, seven minutes to go in the. So, uh, first half of play, second quarter, Caswell again changing the play at the line. Back to pass, Caswell fires it outside, Shayatovich. Shayatovich gets around the end for a pickup of six inside the Pride 40. Yeah, I think uh, whichever team wins this game, Cam, I think uh, they're going to they're gonna need to work on cleaning up this passing game because, I mean, they're going to be going against Dallas. Pass and, defense, you mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Queen City's passing game has definitely been on point tonight, especially Shantovich, who has four receptions. And off Bose going left. And Bose has a first half. Vicious stiff arm as Bones Malone cleans it up at the 32. And, uh, man, Queen City's moving it again. Mm -hmm. I actually think no matter how this game comes out, it's a really good matchup for Dallas. It's, you know, a really good passing offense versus a, both teams have suspect passing defenses. Uh, and Dallas has a pretty solid defense. So, you know, no matter who wins this game, I think they're going to have an uphill battle with, with Dallas in the championship game. Six minutes to go before the half. Hand off to Bose this time. Up the middle, and Bose has a pickup of eight yards, and Queen City's really mixing it up. And I tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, James Richards is making history. He is the first commentator we have ever had in SFL Studios that apparently prefers to stand. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> it, it's better for my back. I've got a sore back. You know, like, 
If I wasn't typing, I I I may I may join you, and I'm getting a little stiff. I myself. can't jump though. Your fan will knock me in the head. <laughs> Second and two, handoff. Bose again, and Bose. Oh, gets around the corner. How did Bose even envision uh, to find the lane to the outside? Another first down into the Tallahassee red zone. Tallahassee's bleeding, and if they don't stop it, we're going to have to amputate one of the limbs here. You're going to have uh, a bad time? Yeah, we're going to have to do some surgery, and it's not looking good. They're, they're bleeding a lot here in the first half. Oh, man, five minutes to go in the first half. Queen City could not be playing better. Hand off to Bose. Bose up the middle, hurdles the defender, and Bose has another first down, first and goal to the six-yard line. Yeah, this is not a trend that you want to see if you're Tallahassee. You don't want to see Marcus Allen Bose picking up these kind of yards, especially through the heart of your defense. I mean, when he's gashing you on the outside because he's he's outrunning your linebackers and he's trucking a corner, okay. But when he's able to pick up that kind of yardage up the middle past your, your uh, star linebacker, and, and just keep hammering out these 10-yard runs. That's the kind of stuff that'll kill you if you're if you're Tallahassee. First and goal, Queen City. Caswell gonna pass. Caswell down the middle. Oh, what a catch! What a catch, what Jake a Legacy! Play. Diving to make the play. It's 20 to 3. That was the catch of the playoffs. Legacy is proving why he's one of the elite receivers in the league. Fantastic catch right there. Great play design, too, with the pick route with number 44. Got him open right across the middle. And then Jake Legacy doing the rest of the work, laying out and making a beautiful catch. Wow, this is – I have – I didn't expect I, this. This is just incredible. I mean, I mean, they're doing it in every single way. Uh, yeah. It's been a total effort by Queen City. This has been exceptional. Yeah, their whole team's really shown up to play, and I, I think it's really good offensive uh, strategy and I, uh, even defensive strategy. It's just an overall good game plan here in the first half from Queen City. Tallahassee looking a little slow. If I'm not mistaken, they've they've started slow in the last couple games. Am I, am I right? Uh, they've started slow, but they definitely haven't dug an 18-point hole. That's for sure. Yeah. That's for sure. Against, now, now, against... Yeah, against uh, Carolina, well, no, Carolina, they started very fast. They jumped out to a huge lead. But against Queen City, they did start a little slow before they sort of woke up and put the game away in the third quarter. Um, but uh, but this is most certainly uh, their slowest start of the year. There's no question about it. Yeah, I, I think last week, uh, Alaska's game, shows why you can never tune out here. And, and especially when you have the number one passing offense against the number 14th passing defense. I mean, anything can happen. And if, if you would have said, you know, 18 points last week in the, the Alaska game, you would have thought it was over too. And then they came charging back, and they're nowhere near as prolific. Oh, Jay Calvin, Kim, what a move in the open field. Picks up 13. Tallahassee needed that. Yeah. Sorry, man. I, I, you know me. No, I'm no. Very excitable. Yeah, no. I think Calvin Kim. I mean, he's gonna, he's got to play big for him. And this is exactly what they need. When Et King's struggling to get the ball downfield, they need to get the ball out to somebody and just let him make a play. Let's go. Tallahassee would love another score before the half to make it a two-possession game heading into the locker room. Field goal, touchdown. It doesn't, doesn't matter. They just, they need to get points and they need to get it in a hurry. 3.35 to go in the first half. Offside, Ed Ritter, free play for King. King flips it outside, but, man, Stenzo Woods Jr., who uh, won the game for Queen City last week uh, against Sioux Falls, was all over that play. Yeah, free play there. I, I would like to see E.T. King, you know, take a chance there, especially on a free play. So we'll see where that puts... We'll see where that puts... Uh, Tallahassee here after that offside. They'll be first and five at their own 49-yard line. There's a look at Howland. You know, I think if we, we talk to the coaching staff of Queen City. Kim's got a first. Tough run by Kim, and that's so that's so unlike Kim to, to run like that, but he, he's showing that he's not giving up and that he's going to give it his all this week. But, you know, I think if we talk to the Queen City coaching staff and the ownership group, uh, you know, I, I don't think they would have thought this game would play out the way it is right now. I think 
they probably would have said, ah, we expect a shootout. Three minutes to go in the first half. Tallahassee, yes, that score is not wrong. They are down by 18. Kim's in trouble. Kim is wrapped up by Greg Morrison, who quietly is one of the best safeties in the SFL. Little surprise. Tallahassee's had a lot of success on the out routes and the slant routes, and they're, they're really just trying to hammer the ball with Kim. Interesting strategy. We'll see if it pays off. King is now empty. With 2.28 to go and counting. Kim on a second down and 10 takes a low snap. Back to pass. Hit as he threw. Passes incomplete. McCoo lays a big hit on his former teammate, J.J. Allen. And the timing of that play was completely disrupted. Yeah, great pressure uh, around the edges. Uh, getting up in E.T. King's face. And then great play there by the legend, uh, McCoo, to break that up. J uh, D.J. McCoo, Jake Legacy. They've been in the league all eight seasons. They've been... On the same team all eight seasons, they're just so accomplished. Um, it's just uh, been tremendous watching them play over the years. Who knows if this may be their last uh, hurrah, especially if Queen City can win their fourth. King going deep down the field. It's intercepted by Morrison at the 20, 25 to the tw uh, 30 yard line. And Queen City is all over Tallahassee on the road in the first half. What, what a turnaround from week 14 to now. Yeah, it's, a, it's incredible. This they, team lost by 45 two weeks ago, the same team. Yeah, and it, and it looks like complete role reversal here. It, it really seems like Queen City has got a solid game plan in place, and they're just they're taking Tallahassee to the shed. 11 carries, 79 yards for Marcus Allen Bose, and Queen City is just putting together a complete game right now, shockingly on the road against the number one seed in Tallahassee Pride. Back to pass, Caswell. Caswell down the middle, overshot as a dead receiver, nearly intercepted by Odom. Yeah, Caswell needs to reel that in. Those are the kind of plays that you can't, that that could have been a dangerous pass there. So uh, Queen, uh, Queen City needs to take care of the ball. They need to keep doing what they're doing, and they need to avoid plays like that. That, that was a right. dangerous throw there by Caswell. Uh, they, have a, they have a pretty solid lead, but you just, you can't take that for granted against one of the best offenses in the league. Two backs and two receivers for Caswell. Caswell's got a second and ten and really on his first poor throw of the night. Hand off to Bose. Oh, and somehow Tallahassee couldn't get there. Tallahassee. He's Joe gone. Adam in the backfield. He is G-O-N-E. Good. And Queen City's up 27-3. We were talking about. MVPs of the playoffs and you you have to look at Bose not only is he making a case for being the MVP of the regular season but he is putting in work today and and it's really shocking because Tallahassee bottled him up in in week 14 and they're the fourth best rushing defense in the league and here they are giving up Bose Bose already has over 150 yards in the first half I mean, a majority of them was on that play, but still, that's a that's a lot of yards to be given up. And when Bose has proven in the past that once he gets going, he's extremely hard to stop. Everybody's saying that's game in the chat. I, I would I would never count out the league's number one scoring offense, no matter how much they're down with a whole half to play. But this is quite possibly the, one of the biggest – shocking halves in 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 playoff history i mean we were talking before the game you know oh man you know i hope tallahassee didn't win by 45 again well i don't think we have to worry about that tonight yeah i'm not sure what's going on in tallahassee you know you know frank gooden and the rest of the coaching staff they're not they didn't overlook queen city so i'm not actually sure what's going on here uh They've, they've been really good all season. They respect all their opponents, and they really game plan here. So I'm not sure what's going to go or what's happening right now. And maybe uh, later, you know, no matter how this game turns out, Frank can shed some light on what happened. Barnes cannot uh, run it back. We've reached the two-minute warning here in Tallahassee. Pride hometown fans are absolutely stunned. So are we. Yeah, I agree with Dwayne. I, I don't think the game's ever over, and I think the Alaska game last week, you know, really showed. And Alaska doesn't have the same kind of offense that Tallahassee does. So if they can do it, Tallahassee's more than capable. King will throw to start the drive. Wide open, but the pass a little bit out ahead of Howland. Otherwise, he would have had a touchdown. Yeah. First down, Tallahassee. Good route there by Holland. A little 
A little erratic throw there by E.T. King. Un uncharacteristic of him. So 140 to go in the first half. Queen City gets the ball to start the second half. So this is a really important possession for Tallahassee because they do not have a single defensive stop in this game. King out of the shotgun with five wide receivers. Back to pass. King over the middle. Caught. That's a generic getting the first down of the 34. If they can come away with a touchdown and make this an 18-point game, that that's what they're going to need here. Back to pass. King. Long middle. Caught somehow by Dangerous. Cochran. Dangerous throw. E.T. King across the middle. Uh, he short-armed it a little bit, and the safety just couldn't make a play on it, but he was in a really good position. That's a dangerous throw by E.T. King, and he's going to really have to clean up uh, the passing game here if he's going to want to bring back the Tallahassee Pride. First and ten, under a minute to go. No need to uh, panic if you're Tallahassee uh, trying to get the last possession of this first half. King back to pass. King will look to Kim on a check down. Kim spins back inside, picks up a couple yards. Tallahassee calls a timeout. Yeah, that's where Kim lives there, right in the flats where you can shake some people. Wasn't able to get much going. You know, hats off to the Queen City defenders bringing them down on that one. 32 seconds left. Tallahassee down to two timeouts. Corsairs have all three. There's a look at King's rather pedestrian numbers, and we haven't really seen any MVP candidate this uh, uh, today besides Marcus Allen Bose, uh having a superstar type performance. King back to pass and King's going short middle and Kim dropped it, third down. Yeah, I think today, you know, we'll, we'll, the, the big story here is quarterbacks. Uh, no quarterbacks in either one of these games have really shined. Uh, you know, we saw a big, I, I think Bose is really gonna be the bright spot of the playoffs and if he continues the day he's having, uh, it's going to be really tough for Tallahassee to come back. But I think in these two games here, these quarterbacks, I, Mock played better than we thought he would have, but, you know, still rather average. Uh, and he really got shut down in the second half. And, and, and they've put it together a game plan that's really shut down E.T. King. Third down and eight. Four receivers, empty backfield for King. King back to pass. King all day to throw. He's picked off again. Greg Morrison. Get out of here! Yeah, I that's uh, I I feel for him on that one. Uh, both both stud quarterbacks today, both Mac Wavy Jr. and E. T. King had rough games today, and you just wouldn't have expected it going into either one of those games. Wow, wow, what what am I watching here? Oh my goodness! Twenty four seconds to go. Tallahassee's defense better be on their toes. Queen City's got all three timeouts. Hand off to Bose. Bose will still keep going. Picks up five. He's up to a buck fifty-five. That'll yeah. be the end of the first Mar half. Marshawn Lynch, trademark beast mode. And I think for the SFL, it's Bose mode. Uh, both Bose brothers are <laughs> terrific runners. When they get going downhill, and even when they get wrapped up at the line, they're still able to move forward and gain a couple of yards. It's the end of the first half. Maybe we don't want to trademark that. Just, oh, yeah. You know, maybe, maybe not. We'll call it We'll call it Richard's mode, <laughs> I think, next no, season. I don't think it's, especially since your feet are all greased up. I don't think you need to mess with that. For a non-star, I'm not too bad. <laughs> End of the first half. Queen City is pulling a shocker. They are all over Tallahassee at the break. We'll be back after the stats and highlights. Here on the s Network on YouTube.
start of the second half. And for those of you that are just getting here, what in the world is going on? Is what you're probably wondering. Third quarter, Tallahassee's down by 25. And Queen City gets the ball. The pride of a lot of work to do. James Richards alongside Cameron Irvine. Happy to have you here for the Eastern Conference Final as Legacy is smashed at the 25-yard line. James, what does Tallahassee have to do to pull off an unthinkable comeback? Well, I think they need to not get into press coverage. We saw that the one time they went into press coverage, they got burnt deep uh, by Queen City, and they got to slow down Doug Bose, or uh, Marcus Allen Bose, excuse me. If they don't do that, there's no way they come back from this. Queen City definitely, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, Houston, Alaska, rather. I'll get the team right eventually as Bose will pick up three. Uh, Alaska did have the largest comeback in playoff history last week at 18 points. The largest comeback in league history is 21 points. That was Los Angeles, who also did it against Houston. This would be unprecedented, second and seven. I think we'll have to double-check this, too, but a lot of corner routes are getting picked off today. Uh, the corner routes towards the sidelines, and I, I'm not sure if that's just because a lot of teams have been back and uh, – zone coverage and they're just playing a lot of cover two deep and cover fours but you know both Mac Wavy Jr. and E.T. King top passers in the league have both struggled today and a lot I, I'm pretty sure a lot of their picks if not all of them came off corner routes third down and two what about the pick to the middle of the end zone yeah but that's a post it's basically the same thing you're you're if you're if you're running a cover oh, they caught it again hangs on the sideline I think they just, they, they they literally cannot be stopped here. Go ahead, and what you were saying. Yeah, I, I, I was saying, you know, when you play a deep cover two or a deep cover four, uh, the post and the corner routes don't work because you're, you're basically throwing it into the zone. And the safeties are back there playing center field. The corners are not pressing you. So you're not, the, the reason why corner routes have been so successful is when teams don't play off right. and they do that press and then the corner is able to, the, basically, the DB has to chase the receiver. But when they're back off of it, the quarterbacks are just throwing it right to them. Bose is to the right of Caswell. It's first down and 10 after another brilliant sideline grab by T.E. Haynes, the third. Bose gets away again. It's Goodness. like the, the angles for the Tallahassee are taking are horrendous. Yeah, we saw in the first game with Alaska, the outside runs uh, really hurt both teams, and we're seeing it again here. Neither one of these teams are equipped to deal That's with the running That's a bad angle back. by Barnes. Yeah. It's terrible. Great block there by the, I believe, the tight end or wide receiver to give him that angle. He, he chipped him right at the end there. But Barnes going inside the yes. tackle to try to make that play. He's such a much better player than that. That is really agree. shocking to see out of A.J. Barnes. First and ten, back to pass. Caswell. Caswell going long. Caught over the defense. Shiatomich walking off. Touchdown, Queen City. Yeah, I'm interested to see if they were in a, uh, a shallow press or medium coverage there because that's the point we were talking about off the line of scrimmage. Okay, so he was in a medium route, but he let – Shayatovich run right past him, and then he's chasing him the whole time, and that's what the corner route is designed to do. If you chase the wide receiver, they're going to burn you every time. James, it's 34-3, to and Queen City scored five touchdowns on five possessions. What? I am what? Not, I'm not surprised. I thought they would be able to bottle up Doug Bo or Marcus Allen Bose, but I I thought both teams would struggle in the passing game. The biggest shock is how well Queen City's doing in the passing game because they're last in the league for, you know, passing yards allowed per game. The Corsairs are up 35 to 3 on the road and at this point we're really going to have to dig into the record books and see what the biggest win for a team on the road in playoff history is because you just don't see this in the SFL, the road teams coming in in big moments and, and, and crushing their opponent, especially a team that's been so prolific all season long. And especially a team that just a few weeks ago did this to Queen City. Right. I think weeks ago. To Dwayne's point, uh, he said, don't ever forget that uh, Queen City has a passing game. And you're right. Uh, they had the ninth best passing uh, offense all season long. 
and obviously what Marcus Allen Bose is doing is not a shock to anybody, but, I mean, you just didn't expect this kind of passing out of Queen City, especially with their style being so heavy run with Marcus Allen Bose. Tallahassee needs some offense. They need it bad, and then they need their defense to come up with some type of a stop. King's pass caught up in the middle. Howland does a nice job of eluding a tackle, at least initially. A nine-yard gain will bring up second and short. Yeah, I'm curious to see uh, how much these builds affect uh, the, the plays because, you know, E.T. King is a gold-level quarterback. He's led the league all season in passing. He's throwing corner routes against a team that doesn't have – any star cornerbacks and he's getting punished for it and then King deep ball caught what a catch by Hallen that ball just hung up there forever and finally Tallahassee gets something to go their way on the outside yeah and that and that was a deep corner out to JJ Hallen that was a jump ball and that's that shouldn't happen especially when the cornerback has the receiver underneath him. I imagine if he was a, a bronze, silver, gold corner, that might have been a more difficult play. But hats off to J.J. Howland to go up top and reel it in for E.T. King. That's exactly what Tallahassee needed. First down and 10, the pride fighting to get back into this game. King, it got all sorts of discombobulated. He loses two on a botched trap play. Hmm. Tough pressure. E.T. King showing, you know, the ability to scramble and shake a defender there, you know, but ultimately he's got to play a little smarter. I would hate to see him get hurt, you know, getting wrapped up like that. He just needs to go down when he sees that happen. King with a second and long, needing some points for the Pride, who are shockingly getting battered here at home. Kim will pick up a couple, but that just takes him back to the original down a distance. Third and ten. For Tallahassee, the clock is not their friend. They're doing a really good job of limiting limiting uh, the running back on the outside. When uh, Kim gets the ball, they're not allowing him to do what Kim does. Four receivers for King. E.T. King needs some magic. King to pass. King to the end zone. Intercepted. Morrison has a hat trick. Another interception in the end zone. And that's what we were talking about, the post route, Cam, across the middle yep. with the safeties playing back deep. If you don't get over top of them, you're throwing it right into the zone. And that was a cover too deep, which is basically designed to take away anything over the top, and then he was just right there to make a great play on the ball. Queen City's just doing literally everything right. They have, they have, they have got this game down to a T perfectly. 6.33 to go in the third. I, I, they continue to blow my mind here tonight, but I don't know why I expected any less out of the three-time champs. Bose hit awkwardly, but he pops right back up after a five-yard game. Is there anything else to add? <laughs> it's, it's just amazing. Just I, I'm, amazing. I'm shocked that both high-money quarterbacks today have been outperformed right. by lesser-money quarterbacks. Right. And Caswell, I believe, is a gold, but, but he's not... He's not the focus. Right, he's not the focus. This man is, and Bose will not go anywhere. Actually loses two. Really good job by Tallahassee there to shut him down. And they need to get off the field. They haven't gotten off the field all day. Yeah. Big, big drive here for Tallahassee. It has to start here, and, and they need to really turn it around right now. You can't wait any longer. There's just not enough time. Third down and seven. Queen City, 35-3. to three. No, we are not missing a zero on that Tallahassee score. It's supposed to be three, not 30. Caswell, third and seven. Pass caught, turn in the corner. Shayatovich got it. First what down. What an effort there by Shayatovich. He's really coming up huge today. That was, a, that was a tough catch and a tough run there after the catch. Yeah, Caswell ranked ninth in the league in passing. Um... He's outperforming E.T. King, who came in at first, averaging 368 a game, and obviously that's not happening for E.T. King and the Pride. Back to pass, Caswell. Caswell, dangerous Oof. throw. Very Almost dangerous. Threw that with his back turn. Shayatovich quietly was a 1,000-yard receiver in the SFL this season. I, I don't think many people would have guessed that uh, coming into the night. 
I would have guessed it, but that's because I've cataloged both of these teams when I coached in, in Baltimore. So I was very aware of the kind of plays. What I'm surprised is I don't remember cataloging this many corner routes by Tallahassee. I don't remember that. Second and ten, two backs and two receivers for Caswell. Straight back, really good pocket presence, and Shayatovich couldn't come up with the catch. Dangerous throw, though. I mean, Dangerous, yes. These are the kind of throws that Tallahassee needs to capitalize on. When uh, when Caswell makes these poor decisions to throw it into coverage and, and kind of just floats the ball, they need to they need to intercept it. They need to punish every bad uh, mistake that Queen City makes. Empty backfield, five wide for Caswell now on a third down and ten as Caswell tries to keep the drive alive and goes six for six scoring. Caswell's pass deep down the field. Oh, he dropped it. It was open again. They've been exposing Tallahassee with Haynes the third deep to the outside, and he just flat dropped it. Yeah, really good throw, really good route by the receiver too. Just didn't do the third part because – as we saw, the corner and the safety were both in a great position to take away the corner route, but because the ball was so well placed by Caswell and the receiver ran such a great route, it really kind of blew up my point that I made about coverage <laughs> on the corner routes. So can Tallahassee get some points? They finally got a stop uh, that they so desperately needed. Maybe that swings some momentum their way. They're going to have to get some big plays. They're gonna have to hit these. Some. They're gonna have to throw the outs and the slants and just hope somebody gets the gets loose and gets going to put up some quick points. They cannot get into the the habit of throwing it deep and trying to force a deep play, a big play to happen. They cannot do that. They have to. They have to move the ball quickly and precisely, medium routes, and they just have to take advantage of the fact that Queen City is playing so deep. King has. Three interceptions tonight, right? All to uh, all to Morrison, I believe. As uh, the handoff goes to Kim, and Jay Calvin Kim will pick up just two yards. Uh, the the career high for interceptions for Et King is five. He had five against Las Vegas, but has had no other game where he's thrown three this year. Second and eight. Of course, Tallahassee lost that game to Vegas. Seven catches for Bucko, six for Hallen, but. That stat is totally irrelevant. The only stat that matters right now is 35-3. to three. Second and eight for the Pride, and the clock is not their friend. King back to pass. King going outside, and that is nearly picked off as they take away the out route now. Yeah, it looks like they've made some adjustments uh, coming out of the second half because now they're playing medium routes and they're and they're sitting on the shallow routes. And I think that's because Tallahassee repeatedly went to the out route, went to the flat route with Kim. And so it looks like they're making some good adjustments, but that may open up the deep ball. So we'll, we'll have to see. They're, they've been playing medium here. They're in a – looks to be a cover three defense. Third and eight. King changing the play at the line. Back to pass. Going long. One-on-one -on -one coverage against a non-star corner, and he does the job again. Stenzo Woods Jr. has been awesome for Queen City all year long, and Tallahassee goes three and out. Yeah, just when you think you've got – them figured out because they're pressing and they're they're doing shallow coverages. They come out on a third and long and go in a cover three. And E.T. King is just playing into the coverage of Queen City. My oh my, Tallahassee will punt the ball away and and just hope their defense maybe get a pick six or something. That snap was high, nearly went over the punter's head. Haynes back to return from his 26-yard line and got one spin to work to the 33. First and 10 uh, with 4.07 to go in the third quarter. And things just not looking positive at all for Tallahassee. Just no momentum, completely flat. Yeah, I, when I, I'm looking at uh, the passing stats across the league right now, and I'll, uh, it, it looks about like every quarterback has a ratio of 1.3 interceptions to one touchdown. And then you get to E.T. King, 39 touchdowns, only 23 picks on the year. He's had a great year. And then you come in today and he's thrown three picks already. He's three in the hole already. And that's unacceptable when you're, you're Tallahassee and you rely so heavily on the passing game uh, for your offense. Don't worry, James. We didn't miss anything. We just watched Marcus Bose 
break like seven Do tackles Marcus for another five-yard gain. Yeah, yep. yeah, no big deal. Second down and five for Queen City at the 38-yard line. Another handoff to uh, Bose, and really nice open field tackle by Barnes. Finally making a decent play in the open field. Barnes has, has really not had a good game today. Yeah, this is what Queen City needs to do. Even if they don't uh, move the ball, they just need to take time off the clock. And I, I don't know. I, I, I think these these non-star corners, I, I can't believe that they would put a full four quarters together, but they're doing a great job. And uh, Bose did not get the first down. So back-to-back -back stops for Tallahassee, but the bigger problem for the Pride you know, I know their defense has struggled today and they've given up a lot of points, but I honestly think they're the, the bigger concern today has been the offense because the defense has not been tremendous all season long, but the offense has, and they can't do anything. Yeah, I'm really dumbfounded here. Fourth and one, E.T. King will get another shot at it. Even if Tallahassee scores again, it would still be likely a four-score game unless they start going for two very early, which is unlikely. 2.50 to go in the third. Barnes calls for a fair catch. He doesn't even get a chance to return it. And King trots back out on the field down 32 at home. Yeah, Tallahassee crowd has been rather silent all game. and Queen City is not letting up. Uh, they've had a couple bad drives uh, these last two drives, but... So far, a really solid three quarters out of them. 2.50 to go, third quarter. Tallahassee on the field over to Kim. Kim's got some room, and Kim shows a nice burst for a six yard pickup. That gets King just over 200 yards passing. Yeah, huge stat line there. Four touchdowns for A.J. Caswell to E.T. King's three interceptions. Yeah, that's that's pretty, uh, pretty bizarre. Um, and. and and this team, uh, this Tallahassee Pride team, does not lose often at home. And when they lose at home, it's it's by very close margins. We'll get to that stat more in a moment. Kim's got a first down, really nice run up the middle. But Tallahassee, uh, they just don't have a lot of time to, to keep doing this. Yeah. I wonder how much this game right here in this footage is going to affect next season's builds. I wonder if teams are going to take – you know, the Queen City approach, which is, you know, overload on offense. You know, don't pay any mind to the star corners and put those those resources elsewhere. I wonder how much this game will affect next season's builds. Uh, that's an interesting point. Uh, they've definitely uh, done it in, in an unorthodox way as Kim bangs his way for another five-yard pickup. I, I just – it's almost like Tallahassee – E.T. King has gone from MVP candidate to I literally don't want you touching the ball anymore. Like, this is fascinating what's happening here. Well, you, the argument, and I'm sure this has happened more than just this season, but the argument is, you know, why spend a point or a, a slot, a gold slot on a quarterback? You know, we saw uh, Funk get away with it in Atlanta. He had a great season. I believe he was a bronze quarterback. That's a first down. Yes, he was. And, and there's other teams that have followed similar path to Atlanta, and they've they've found pretty decent success. And, uh, you know, you compare the stats of A.J. Rustelli, the only quarterback in a gold slot position who's really earned that gold pick is E.T. King, but here we are in a conference championship game, and he's not doing anything. First and ten, King deep down the middle. Pass caught, Howland right on cue, doing something there. First down into the red zone for the Pride. They gotta hurry it up now. By the way, Tallahassee's uh, worst loss ever at home was by 17 points, 24 to seven, back on February 18th, 2016. In that game, Alexander West, the quarterback at the time for the Pride, threw a franchise record six picks. Yeah, and you saw in that last play, everybody played up a little bit, and then Hallen on the post route got behind the safety, and that's you just can't bank on that happening a lot. Under a minute to go in the third quarter, King's got two in the backfield as Tallahassee desperately tries to make this uh, look interesting here heading into the fourth quarter. Back to pass, King. Outside, really good throw. Cochran all the way down to the one-yard line. That was perfect. Yeah, that was uh, threaded the needle right there. Threaded the needle. That was. I, I think that was a dangerous throw. You see the 21 sitting underneath. Made a play on it but came up short. Threaded the needle. Beautiful throw, risky throw, but 
Beautiful nonetheless. And that's going to run the clock down to the end of the third quarter. E.T. King has really struggled tonight. He's going to need the performance of the ages to come back and win this one. Queen City all over Tallahassee tonight. First and goal for the Pride. And off Jay Calvin. Kim dropped in the backfield. That's not a good start. Real with his fifth tackle. Yeah, two good points. You know, I think Destro said if he had a team, he would go with a bronze quarterback. I mean, the stats would say that that's you could do that. You know, and then I see Dwayne talking about the unorthodox built. Uh, with no free safety. And off to Kim again. And Jay Calvin Kim is put to what? Tallahassee needs to get in the end zone, right? Yeah. Why are they fooling around down here? Not enough time, especially when Marcus Allen Bose is on the other side of right. the ball. If you were against, you know, a one-dimensional pass offense, you'd say, okay, yeah, we can take a little bit of time because there's going to be, you know, several more drives than there would be. But you haven't stopped Marcus Allen Bose all day. Third and goal for King, trying to get in the end zone for the first time tonight. Nearly intercepted, and they can't get in. King looking for a P.I. There's no way he's getting that call. It's fourth and goal. And, I, you know, I, at this point, why not kick a field goal? Like, uh, I, I think you got to go for it. You can't you cannot throw in the towel right now and just take the points. you got to go for it. Um, and it looks like they're going to kick the field goal. I the really, really tough to see, especially at home in front of their home crowd, kicking the field goal here. I would have liked uh, to see the the, the the attempt for a touchdown, but I mean, the way today's going, you know, they're just they just want points. Yeah, and and I I honestly, um, as the field goal is good, you know, I, I kind of, in a way, I kind of agree with the decision. If you, you know, you're down by 32, which means that you need four touchdowns and four two-point conversions now the likelihood of of all pro let's just be real here going for a two-point conversion at this juncture of the game down by this much it's probably not going to happen so regardless you're going to be down uh either by five scores or four scores so you might as well get down by four scores and not have to worry about all those two-point shenanigans because at the end of the day you got to get stops and uh and, 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 you know, better luck next time on the touchdowns, right? Like, at this point, if I'm Tallahassee, I'm taking the small victories. Yeah. What's the most amount of onside kicks ever recovered in a game? Is there a, anybody like know may, that? Maybe two. Maybe. I feel like at some point there was there was an instance where a team recovered an onside, scored, or a team recovered an onside, and then threw a pick, and, and the game was over. But there's no way there's ever been more than two as Bose loses a yard in the backfield. Yeah, there's not enough timeouts in the world for Tallahassee. Uh, it's it's looking inevitable at this point. Uh, I think if you're Dallas, you know, you would have preferred. I mean, no disrespect to either team, but I think you would have preferred the Queen City. Well, and they get it at home. They get the home yeah. game. And, I mean, and I say they probably preferred Queen City because Queen City has the 14th best passing defense. But as you're seeing today... They're playing a lot better than the stats show. Caswell overshoots Shayatovich. That stops the clock. Now it's third and 11. If you're Queen City, I know you're up by 29. But this is no time to, like, take the foot off the gas. They have not scored in three straight possessions. Right. Yeah, it, it, it appears that they've done enough, Cam. Uh, but, I, you know, if, I, if I'm if i trying to get into the championship game, I want to put my foot – I want to make a statement here from Queen City. And I, not that they haven't because they've had a hell of a game, but – Caswell, third down, caught by Legacy, and then a missed tackle. And whoever that was who missed the assignment, he got blown up. That was dirty. Yeah. Look at this again. I, who was that on the outside – 20, that was 33. Barnes, and watch Barnes turn around and get hammered, bam, by T.E. Haynes. A.J. Barnes is having the worst game of his career. Yeah, he, he took a bad a bad approach on the ball, then he tried to make a play on the ball, and then he ran right into the – a great block by the, this, the receiver there. 
uh, to really give Legacy room to move after the catch. Barnes looks completely lost tonight. First and ten for Queen City as they are right back again knocking on the doorstep. Marcus Allen Bose will be wrapped up by Barnes but not until the 20. He's averaging nine yards a carry. Yeah, that's it. That's intense. And I think if you're Queen City, you're looking at the way you're playing this week, and you, you've got to be extremely happy going into the championship game playing like this, especially after seeing Dallas struggle. Um, and, and uh, I mean, let's be honest here. Tallahassee was one of the scariest teams in the regular season. Wow. First down and 10, back to pass. Caswell fires outside. Wide open, caught by Haynes at the one-yard line. A.J. Caswell is just murdering the pride here this evening. Yeah, blown coverage there by the corner uh, on a corner route. And like we had said all game, if you don't, uh, if, if you're in a position to chase, and I mean that time you just blew the coverage, but if you're even chasing, that's a dangerous play. So We're looking back. Someone, someone asked in the chat, has a Thomas Patternitty offense ever been held out of the end zone? As Bose is going to take the long way in for the touchdown. Dragging a few people oh with him. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. He took the worst route possible to get in the end zone and he still got it done yeah beast mode right there that's but this is what you want to see out of queen city you want to see a full game they they had been shut down and oh, three straight drives i think two or three straight drives so you want to you want them if, if you're queen city you want to see that they're capable of putting up points all throughout the game plus i mean this has got to make you feel good you know going from week 14 with that that box score to to here in the conference championship where it matters the most and basically doing the same thing that they did to you in week 14 and that's just saying queen city's adjustments worked and this is queen city has had probably the best route as far as like game plan wise because they're going from uh tallahassee who's a pass heavy offense into dallas who's also a pass heavy offense so their adjustments they're not going to have to make too many adjustments here uh, I think if you're Dallas, you got to be scared about what Queen City has done here to Tallahassee. And you have to you have to look and say, well, Mac Wavy Jr., look what they did to E.T. King. You're going to have to get in the film room this week, and we're going to have to put together a hell of a game plan because whatever Queen City did is is a big contradiction to what we're, we're going to try to do. And the pedigree of Queen City, you know, mm. Dallas has never been here. Queen City's won three titles, and, and and the only better postseason performance, complete performance I have ever seen, was Queen City in their last championship game. That season six championship game against Houston was the most complete performance in in the playoffs I've ever seen out of an SFL ball club, and this is right up there. This is on the road, tooth and nail. Like I am just, I just. Tip my hat to him. It's just been impressive. And yeah. by the way, by the way, no Thomas Patternitty team has ever not scored a touchdown. Second and nine. King back to pass. Deep ball down the field. Caught by Cochran into Queen City territory. 7.23 to go. First down. That's just his third catch. Yeah, I like I like the fact that Tallahassee's coming out and still trying to move the ball. Uh, you know, they're even though it looks like they're going to lose this game pretty handedly. I mean, they're still trying, and and just like you know Frank Gooden, they're full of class. They're going to try to put on a good show regardless. And you know, Frank's in the chat, just full of class. The whole Tallahassee organization, top to bottom, just a great group of guys. And so it's tough to see their team, you know, perform like this in a playoff game after such a spectacular regular season, you know. Devastating definitely for Tallahassee and their fans. Uh, Tallahassee uh, was in the conference championship game in their first season. They lost to Santa Fe uh, in that game, and the Gorillas uh, were able to take that into the championship game, nearly beat D.C., as I was telling you earlier, the greatest football game. I've ever seen second down and eight. King back to pass. Short route outside. Caught by Menander. 
to the 34-yard line. So really, uh, James, we turn our attention to what appears to be our um, matchup for the championship game. And Queen City will be playing, get this, this will be their fourth championship appearance. And it will be the fourth different team they will be playing in the championship game. They've played Oklahoma City, Orlando, Houston, and now Dallas. As a King drops to throw on first and ten passes, caught by Cochran short of the first down. The two teams met earlier this season, and it was one heck of a game. 39-31, Queen City won with a 17-point burst in the fourth quarter. And uh, both quarterbacks, mediocre performances. Mac Wavy did manage 419 yards of receiving, but it was Bose in that game, 201 yards and three touchdowns that made the difference for Queen City. Yeah, and I think I think if you're Dallas, you just you have to be slightly concerned with how Mac Wavy Jr. played today. And then the last time they played too, I mean, Mac Wavy threw four picks. So if today is any indication of how this game's going to go, Mac Wavy Jr. has a lot of improving to do in one week's time. Oh, man. And then we've got expansion voting starting tomorrow. You are involved with uh, the London Knights. You joined on last night officially as hopefully their head coach, depending upon how the owner voting goes, hopefully for you, I mean. Um, and uh, so that should be exciting. That pass is caught for a touchdown. So uh, Thomas Paternitti won't be uh, shut out of the end zone for the first time in league history in Tallahassee, uh, at least – it's a touchdown on the board here late. Yeah, good throw here by E.T. King. Unfortunately, a little late. A little late yeah. in the game to start getting passes and catches like that. But, yeah, I I, I joined uh, the London Knights last night. Uh, I was going to wait until uh, after league voting to make my decision. Uh, but after, you know, speaking with Liam – and first of all, I just want to say thank you to every team that reached out to me. You know, there is a lot of class in this league and a lot of great owners in this league. Uh, a couple teams offered me a head coaching position, which I'm I'm completely honored. Um, what what it came down to for me uh, was how hard Liam worked in St. Louis this past year, and I knew that if I was going to be a first-time head coach, I was going to need an owner that not only worked as hard as I did. Uh, but also would work with me hand in hand to create a, a game plan that we could both be proud of to put on the field. And I think he did a, a great job coaching in St. Louis. And, you know, I worked hard under TJ and learned what I could uh, in Baltimore. So I think together we'll be able to make something happen. Well, you guys are competing, your bid competing with uh, Andy Hamilton, Shan Varner, Greg Morris, Aaron Arrington. Um, yeah, a lot of great, a lot of great uh, applicants this season, and and I wish them all luck. And and no matter which three get the bids into the league, you know the league's only going to benefit from this because there's just so many bright talents and great people. Uh, this this crop of expansion. Of course, we'll announce the expansion teams as Bose continues to truck for yardage. I believe that puts them over 200 yards. We'll uh, announce those expansion teams at the SFL Championship game, which looks like it's going to be in Dallas. Damon Simeon will be uh, alongside uh, me for the call of that game next Sunday. Time to be determined, but likely around the 4 or 5 o'clock central hour um, as, uh, as we get the, uh, the final game of the SFL's eighth regular season, or eighth season in general, uh, underway and championship games are always fun and the fact that Queen City is has been in it in season one season three season six and season eight is just uh, just the ability to stick with it that long is is that amazing at that high of a level yeah I think uh, in the league's short history you have to consider Queen City to their ownership group and their coaching staffs to be you know considered probably one of the greatest teams of all time so far and I mean time will tell but they appear to be you know growing and, and adapting with the future you know well and if they win a fourth title it's most certainly a dynasty four titles in eight years and and Queen City's looking for coaching help 
Like, they keep posting job applications and they're not getting any responses. Like, I, I don't think they're going to go without a staff uh, heading into next season, especially if they win and are looking for some more help. Uh, that, that has just dumbfounded me uh, for the last couple of months as Queen City has looked to try to right the ship. Obviously didn't look very attractive in week 14 when they lost to Tallahassee by 45. But with Marcus Allen both running like this and Queen City up 29, 221 yards. There's nothing more you can say. It's fourth and short, actually. I think the big fear is the league doesn't have a lot of seasoned coaches. Um, there's not a lot of depth, and a lot of these owners are kind of doubling down. And we have a lot of great owner coaches in the league that are doing a great job. But I think, I think one point is the younger coaches are a little intimidated by such impressive ownership groups, and maybe they feel like they'd be overshadowed. Uh, if they if they were to go to such a great organization like Queen City, but I think the second point is close close play there. Uh, the second point is too that you know Queen City struggled on defense throughout the year. Uh, I mean it's not showing here, but you know that's also a daunting task for a new a new coach or a young coach to come in and say, wow, I've got to coach the 14th ranked passing defense in the league. <laughs> And I gotta do it against teams like Tallahassee, Dallas. That's that's scary, man. Nobody wants their their uh, an unseasoned coach doesn't want their career to be defined, you know. Especially if it doesn't work out in their favor. All right, Tallahassee's got the ball back. 3:28 to go in the fourth. Kim takes a check down and is wrapped up pretty quickly. Gain of two. Clock is winding down here as. Uh, as the fourth quarter and the conference finals come to a close, SFL postgame show coming up immediately following the game. We want to hear from uh, everybody involved uh, in the conference finals today. Tallahassee, Queen City, Alaska, Dallas. A lot of good, foot, uh, good football play, not only today, but all season long, as this may be the last time uh, this season you get a chance to chat with us as uh, Howland makes the catch. It's short of the first down, fourth down. So the SFO post game show is coming up uh, right after this as you look at an updated uh, uh, stat line for Tallahassee wide receivers. James, you're also involved in, uh, as Tallahassee goes for it here on fourth down, you're also involved in Axis football. You're a producer. You guys have a game coming out later this uh, summer. And it's not really uh, just about uh, this season for you guys or this iteration of the game, but uh, your trajectory for the future is something that you're really excited about. Yeah, I mean, if you look back to 2013, uh, we were a flash game, which, you know, we all every game starts somewhere, and we started in flash, and it was pretty bad. Uh, but, I mean, considering where flash games are, uh, but if you look at where we were to where we are now, we've made tremendous strides. Uh, I don't know if, if you guys have been watching the dev videos, you'll see that, you know, we're implementing a new physics engine uh, or – you know, not necessarily a whole engine, but a, a physics-based uh, system to increase gameplay quality. And then uh, next next season for 2018, we're overhauling the franchise mode. <laughs> the backup! The backup just came in, went five wide, and he just <laughs> threw a catch to Haynes. What? Oh, man, I've seen it all. Good ball, what too. What throw, yeah, man. Really good ball. I mean, when you leave a guy wide open, you know, it, these corners have just been blowing it all day. And I don't know if that was like a design, like shallow route by the corner, and then they, they expect the cover two to pick that up across the top, but that's a lot to ask for, especially on a big player like tight end uh, Hayes. But, yeah, uh, Axis, I mean, we're we're really working towards a complete game. Uh, obviously, we're, we're always going to be behind Madden. Uh, until we have that eureka moment and we figure something out. But, I mean, Madden's one of the better games. I mean, they're, they're, they've obviously got the tenure in the market. But we're, we're working hard, and uh, we listen to every single comment made, and, and uh, we, we analyze what we can do better. We're always looking at new techniques in the industry, no matter what the game genre is. And uh, we're working hard, and, and we're growing. Uh, I think trajectory was a good word. Uh, if you look at our trajectory, we've never been complacent. Uh, we've always strived uh, to push forward, and we've come a long way. And we'll always, we'll always keep pushing. So that's one thing that uh, 
that you can count on from Axis Games. Second down, 12 for Queen City. All the backups are in now as the Tallahassee's trying to exhaust their timeouts. Come out of this with a little uh, pride, no pun intended. That uh, run is good for seven. Third down and five, and the Pride are down to one timeout. Yeah, hats off again. Hats off to Frank Gooden and, and Tallahassee. Just a classy bunch of individuals. I know if I... If I had a, if I were coaching a game like this, I'd be, I probably wouldn't handle it as well as, as Frank has, and and just the whole Tallahassee uh, organization. Just and, and they were three and nine last year. They went three and nine to nine and three. This was a total team turnaround mm -hmm. as the Pride burned their last time out. The field goal unit will come on for Queen City. Yeah, and that that just speaks to the the caliber of mind that that Frank has. Uh, you know, he tried something, didn't work, retooled, and now, you know, they came back and had a great regular season. Unfortunately, that didn't translate over here in the playoffs, and, you know, their their game plan for this game just wasn't on par with Queen City's. And, th and then you hats off to Queen City. I mean, you just shut down the most prolific offense of this season, and you did it convincingly. And so if you're Queen City, I mean, don't rest on your success. But you got to feel really good heading into Dallas against a team that's built really similar to the way Tallahassee is. Dallas is a better defensive team, right. so I don't expect Queen City to do what they did here today in the passing game or the run game. But Marcus Allen Bose has ran well against teams all year, regardless. Dallas. Yeah. So we'll see. I definitely think Queen City is going to have to make some adjustments on on uh, offense they're not going to be able to throw uh, dallas invested heavily into their secondary uh, every one of their members is a is a paid spot uh, both corners both safeties uh, really good defensive squad so uh, caswell's not going to have all day to throw uh, and if he throws some you know arid passes like he did today dallas is going to take advantage of it uh, but on the same token Mac Wavy Jr. in their last meeting, four interceptions. He he had a similar game today. He showed that he does struggle when teams game plan against the passing attack. So Dallas is going to have to figure it out. And this is probably the team that you could run more against. Um, so if they wanted to take the pressure off Mac Wavy, um, sure. But you you can't get too far away from your identity if you're Dallas. You have to do uh, you have to do what you do and. You know, and that's throw the ball, and you live and die by it. I think the X factor here for Queen City that, that people just are not, or they're just overlooking, is A.J. Caswell, right? Okay, th these are his touchdown and interception ratios in Queen City's victories. Three touchdowns, no picks. One touchdown, two picks, so he's at four and two as King converts the first down. I want to continue with this experiment here. Um, against Baltimore, he had two touchdowns, no picks. So he's six touchdowns, two interceptions through three games. Nice knock away from Real there. Um, against Atlanta, he threw five touchdowns, one pick. So that's now 11 touchdowns to three interceptions. Uh, against Sioux Falls, one and one, so 12 and four. And against Baltimore, two and three. So 14 touchdowns, seven picks in six victories. And then obviously last week he had a really good game, and then here today he was he was excellent. I mean, when this guy plays well, Queen City's almost untouchable, offensively anyway. Yeah, I agree. And and Mac, to your point, uh, I'm comparing it to what Queen City has, which is just they have two uh, badged players in the secondary versus Dallas. They have a, a badge at strong safety. They have two safety badges, and then they have uh, two corners. So. Definitely a tougher secondary uh, going in next week for Queen City. Uh, but, I mean, Mac Wavy, I mean, it, it should be easier for him today since Queen City doesn't have two badged corners. But, I mean, look how they fared today against the number one passing offense. Really nice catch there from Howland, Tallahassee, and uh, E.T. King moving the chains. But King comes up short, so... After we saw, you know, basically we were talking about it. You know, it's really it was really down coming into the game. I think to four candidates for MVP. It was the league's record holder for picks in a season, Troy Lashaw. 
It was the league's record holder for sacks in a season, Alex Dominguez. It was E.T. King, and it was the league's record holder for rushing yards in a game, Marcus Allen Bose. And I think after this weekend, what do you think? Is, is Bose a shoe-in, or do people, uh, you know, look at the whole body of work and give it to somebody else? Really nice catch there from Cochran. I, it, it depends how the owners... Well, everybody uh, gets to vote. Oh, well, I, I think it just depends how everybody views it. I mean, if you're looking at great regular seasons, then you have to look at E.T. King, uh, you know, and Marcus Allen Bose. Uh, you know, you can't discount them. But then you see all all these candidates, you know, LaShaw, uh, Dominguez, and, uh, you know, Mac Wait. All these guys have struggled today, but the only one – in this running that's done anything is Marcus Allen Bose. And the dude just continues to chug along. And, I mean, how do you not vote for a guy like that? King back to pass, 45 seconds. King, corner of the end zone. That's knocked away. What a play by another generic in the secondary to knock that away at the last minute third down. Yeah, I, I mean, I agree. JJ I Stiles. agree, Mac. I agree uh, Stephen Mullinex is a – as a defensive stud, I agree. Um, but, I mean, still no excuse for a gold, you know, gold quarterback to have the day that he had, you know. And, and I mean, it translated over to E.T. King, you know. These are gold quarterbacks that teams are really relying on that just aren't producing. Are you putting Steven's offensive game plan, like, as the fault that E.T. King's performance also wasn't as good? <laughs> like carried over to the other game. Yeah, I I think I think E.T. King watched Mac and was like, oh boy, it's gonna be a rough day. And you're right, you're you're right, Mac. At the end of the day, it's all about the W, and you're five and zero, oh, and you're moving on to your second championship game in two years. And hats off to you in Dallas. You know, getting that W, really coming back in the last two minutes of that game against a great mind like Stephen Molnix, and you know. Hey, what what can you say? He's five and zero. Oh. As, as bad as Mac Wavy Jr. played, <laughs> he's five and zero. Oh. He's going to his second championship in two years. How, that's like saying Eli Manning sucks, but he's got two rings and he did it against <laughs> arguably one of the greatest quarterbacks in the NFL, and Tom see, Brady. I can see Mac Wavy now. Like, don't you dare compare me to Eli. I do not want. To Is it uh, Mac Wavy Manning? Is that <laughs> is that what we're seeing there? Knocked away at the goal line again by Styles. Second and goal. Everybody in Dallas is probably like, man, I'm so glad JD's not calling the championship <laughs> game next week. <laughs> He's being too hard on us. Second and goal for Tallahassee. Well, I, you know, I, I just think when you invest a gold pit, you only get three. So when you invest, you know, in that slot, you just you pray that the gold players come through when it matters the most. And, and today, Mac Wavy came through when it mattered the most. Uh, it was ugly, but he, he, he came back in the last two minutes. I mean, that first drive was super impressive. He didn't – I don't think he missed on that first drive. And then right. something happened for the rest of the game up until the last two minutes that, you know, he, he the first and the last drive were the, the best Max had all year. Cochran scores a touchdown, so Tallahassee – Saves a little face in the fourth <laughs> quarter. Uh, I'm not sure how much face they actually save, but uh, it, it's got to count for something. This Pride offense just uh, just completely inept for for three quarters. Like you, know, you just can't you just can't do. You know you may have been able to do that in the first game of our doubleheader, but against this Queen City offense, like you, you know you didn't stand a chance. Yeah. And, I mean, this is coming against backups. So, it, it's – these points aren't really – I'm just – I'm trying to give them something. Yeah. And you're just ruining it for them. Yeah. Well, I mean, we can go back to Mac Wavy here. And he said, <laughs> kickers just need to worry about kicking. And, I mean, you know what? You're absolutely right, Mac. I I missed too many field goals this year. And and I uh, ate too many crab cakes. And now, you know – uh, if all goes well, I'll be heading to London and I'll eat some fish and chips, and but then I'll still have greasy hands and feet. So I don't, I don't know how that's going to work out. Tallahassee just recovered the onside kick, and I'm not sure what the penalty is on. It's on a late hit on Queen City, so Tallahassee gets the ball back again. I'm not sure that 31 seconds is enough. Yeah, time. 25 points in 35 seconds is going to be really <laughs> hard to do. 
big big boy comes in and just smacks down this uh Oh this, yeah. Oh boy, that was a cheap shot. Landed right on him. I I I would like to say that was in the heat of the play, but that, that play was over. Yeah. And, yeah, that was that was not a good look for the Corsairs after all the good they've done tonight. King Ends up with 406 yards, couple touchdowns, three picks. The end stat line won't look too bad, but uh, but we all know it was a rough night for King. Deep ball for King, caught by Menander. He's going to break a tackle. He's going to tiptoe down the sideline, and he scores a touchdown. Now it's <laughs> now it's a 19-point game. Another onside kick here. Five five seconds ran off the clock, or eight seconds ran off the clock. Really nice move by Menander, not to step out of bounds. Yeah, that corner route, again, I mean, they lived in, and died by the corner route today. Uh, did, uh, did he step out? I, I don't know. It was hard, very close. Yeah, probably not worth challenging at this point for Queen City. You just want to get out of, out of here today with, you know, healthy players. and. Well, they can. It's inside two minutes. Yeah. You're too worried about criticizing Mac Wavy that you forgot about the two-minute challenge. Mm. Oh, yeah, the league, yeah. <laughs> James did not like that joke. <laughs> I liked the joke. He didn't like At it. At the end of the day, I'm one of the biggest Mac Wavy Jr. fans, so, you know. Extra point is good. All right, onside kick time. Yep. Here we go. 23 seconds. If, if you can score a touchdown in eight seconds, that means that you have the exact amount of time you need to score three more mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to win the game. Uh, I I would uh, I would resign as commissioner if I, if that happened. That would just be uh, that would be silly, insane. Yeah, Queen City recovers the onside kick and the ball game is over. Good fight by Tallahassee in the fourth quarter, but way too little, uh, way too little, too late. And the Queen City's going to their fourth title game. I'm taking a lot of heat on my position on <laughs> Mac. Wait, I I tell you, I absolutely love Mac, uh, but you know. At the end of the day, you gotta. If it if he's thrown a bunch of picks, I mean that's it's, it just is what it is. He threw two. Yeah, he but he threw two. What what is E. T. Kings is he threw three? Yeah. Well, again, I'm not. There, I'm not gonna kick Tallahassee while they're not only down but really down yeah, this game. I'm yeah. not. You you can criticize Mac Wavy Jr. because he's going to the championship game the second time in two years, and you just expect excellence out of him, you know. Well, maybe we'll hear some excellence out of him on the post game show. Forty five twenty seven, the Queen City Corsairs. Congratulations! I still can't believe it. Queen City going to their fourth SFL championship game in eight seasons. And they did it with 276 yards through the air, 229 yards on the ground. James, final thoughts before we kick it over the postgame show. Yeah, great, great season by all four teams uh, today. And, uh, you know, I'm really excited to see this championship game. Uh, Mac Wavy Jr. taking on Marcus Allen Bose. It'll be interesting to see how the two play styles uh, clash. All right, after the uh, look at the highlights and stats, well, we'll do, just do them right now, 210-473-8428. James will be able to listen through my headset and be able to ask you questions as well here on the NFL Postgame Show, which is uh, now underway as we start to immediately break down Queen City versus Dallas, the three-time champions up against the up-and-comers. 5-5-9. Five, five, I know who this is. It's Mac Wavy Jr. How you doing, Mac? What's going on? All right, let me get you turned up here so uh, James can uh, <laughs> can get a listen. But uh, Mac, man, five and zero in the playoffs. You just got to be just just so happy that it ended up uh, going in your favor today. Uh, you know, you're always happy when it goes in your favor. You know, especially when that game means so much and it gets you to the big dance. But um, I'm I'm happy for my coach. You know, I'm happy for my teammates. I've I've did this already. I've I felt what it is to go into this game. I felt what it is to win this game. So now I'm just trying to win it for my teammates and my coach as well as myself. You're probably thinking to yourself, "All right, man, I'm gonna have to beat T Pat. Like I'm gonna have to go into this game and I'm gonna have to beat my old coach." And then Queen City showed up tonight, and now. 
Yeah. You have to go in and you got to beat a three-time champion, which is harder. Which would have been harder, I guess. Um, you know, I respect Keith, Keith has so much. You know, he's uh, he did a lot for me in my young career. And, um, you know, so that's when he, my thinking of having to play then was, you know, hey, well, one of us is going to repeat. You know what I mean? Me and Keith that. But, um, you know, the ball didn't bounce their way today. And you got to just, you can't do nothing but tip your cat to um, Queen City. They they balled their butts off. And, uh, you know, I knew I knew the game was a problem when I seen uh, Marcus Allen Bowles averaging 7.2 yards a carry in the, I believe it was in the second in the second quarter. So, they couldn't. It seemed like they couldn't stop him. You know, you got to gang tackle that man. You need more than one body. He's taking everybody out one on one. That's 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 cookies for him. Cookies and pies. You know, he's just eating that up alive. James, you got any questions for Mac? Yeah, Mac. How do you how do you see next week going? Uh, you know, just based on how both of these games played out today. Like, how do you anticipate it breaking uh, down? Um, they won. We won. So you know. It, Today is really in the past. You don't you can't do nothing about how the game went today. You can't use that next week, right? I mean, shoot, look at look at Tallahassee. They 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 did basically what QCC did to them today, two weeks ago. And I mean, that didn't help out. Uh, that didn't help out QCC. I mean, that didn't help out Tallahassee today. So I mean, the past is in the past. You know, all you can do is look at the tape and uh, try to make adjustments every game. Oh, and that, and that that's the point that I was alluding to. You know, you have to be rather concerned, you know, seeing E.T. King having the season that he did, and now you got to go in against this Queen City Corsair defense that looks primed to, to play against Dallas' style of offense. And that that's what I was asking. Like, how do you – what adjustments uh, can you make not, to really combat to that? Style of defense. They had a great game today. I mean, but – I mean, they're a running team, and they and they they went off course today. So I think they kind of caught a uh, uh, Tallahassee doing stuff they weren't expecting them to do. I'm pretty sure Tallahassee didn't expect them to throw all over them like that in the in the first half. I'm pretty sure they didn't expect Shea Tovis to to have a big game like that. You know what I mean? So, um, it's it. You know, it's a big game. So of course we're worried about it. We want to win this one more than we want to win the last one. But I mean. Well, regardless of how it plays out, you know, congratulations to you and your Dallas teammates to to run this gauntlet all season long and then, you know, make it to the biggest game of the year, you know. And for you, second time in two years, that's incredible. Yeah, back at this, uh, you know, it's a lot of uh, hard work that goes into game planning every week. And, you know, I, I, I talked to t a lot a lot last season and do the same with Steven this season so I, I, I truly feel like I've been uh, blessed you know to, to go from the probably the the best offensive mind in the league to going to what I in my opinion the best defensive mind in the league Mac I have you know, one so I have one more question for you you know last last season Minneapolis was sort of in the underdog role you had to uh, win on the on the road in the playoffs at Sioux Falls. You then had to um, uh, you, you then had to, to win again, I believe, on the road if I'm remembering correctly. And then had to play Louisville um, on the road uh, and, and win a championship game there. You've gotten to enjoy this uh, this run at home, Dallas, because of Tallahassee's uh, blunder tonight, gets to actually host the game. Are you sure you don't want to fly from California to uh, to uh, be here at SFO headquarters next week? <laughs> I would love to, man, but uh, <laughs> my kids, my, I, I don't know, if my kids gonna let me go out there like that. <laughs> <laughs> but but has it has it been sort of a different attitude or or a different mantra to to be going through these playoffs sort of as the favorite, as the team that people are gunning for? Um. I don't know. I don't. In the West, you know, we might have been the favorites, but I, don't, I think if uh, Tallahassee would have been there, they probably would have, they probably would have been the, the favorites over us. But um, yeah, to, to answer your question, it feels um, feels a little different from you know being home all all this season in the playoffs to last year being away all season. I guess you know when you're on away, uh, you you uh, you, it takes you to that zone. You know, you 
extra little extra pressure. You know, you got to deal with the uh, with the uh, you know the a home crowd and any little mistake you do, you know that they're going to be cheering and then you have it. So I mean, it kind of makes it kind of makes it a little bit easier. Like today, you know, when I threw them two picks, you know, two picks. You know, when I threw those in crucial situations in uh, in the red zone, you know, I, I tell myself, I beat myself up because, you know, if, if we kick two field goals right there instead of me throwing them two picks, then it's a tight ball game. And then that drive right there, it's a, when we score that touchdown to Conk, it makes it now we're up seven instead of only being up one and then we're putting that pressure on, on, on the 50 shades of great defense because if they kick that winning field goal, we lose by two. You know what I mean? Right. But if we score that if we score that touchdown then we're up seven and the worst they could do is tie. So, you know, it's just it's just about making mistakes and uh and and fixing the mistakes, so Well Mac, I can't wait to watch uh James critique your play from the chat room next week for the championship game. And I <laughs> and I can't uh I can't wait to uh watch you square off against the three time champs. It's definitely um, you know, that that, that old school uh, owner versus that new school owner uh, and, and franchise in in the Dallas Roughnecks. So this is going to be awesome, man. What a matchup, and uh, it's so cool that you're back in the game again. And uh, we'll see you next week. All right, I want to thank you. And just just to let everybody know, our defense had our secondary has one bronze corner and one silver free safety, and the rest are just common players. So they do a hell of a job. Shout out to my secondary. All righty. Well, sounds good, Mac. Thanks for the time. All right. Bye-bye. 904, you're on the SFL Post Game Show. What's popping, him? Frank Gooden. And James. Frank Gooden. <laughs> the, one of the cla- – one of the classiest guys I have to I have to tell you I just I have to keep saying it because I don't know what happened today do you Oh yeah we I mean you can say yes and no I mean bottom line everybody saw it we uh we just had a bad game today we really had a bad game today and 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 while at the same time QCC was ready and they brought it I, I've never seen AJ Barnes play so poorly. Bad angles, uh, miss misreads on on passes like that is a gold face of the franchise safety. He didn't do anything in in returns. D- did he burn himself out last week because uh, he had the best game of his career last week to his worst game of the of his career this week. You know, possibly. You know, we you know um, we had a question. Stephen asked us a very uh, telling question. He was like, "Did you guys want to, you know, did you as a coach, did you want your team to kind of slow it down and save something for the next game?" And I was like, "No, we need to turn it up. Maybe, <laughs> <laughs> maybe we turned it up, and that was the wrong move." Because yeah, I mean, the, the, not only AJ, but our the, the team seemed a step slower today. Um, at home and you know it's we I don't think we saw when we when we beat QCC as uh as convincingly as we did a couple weeks ago I don't think we saw that team you know not the full at full string so you know that in combination with uh putting the pedal to the metal last week may have contributed to a little bit of overconfidence by the team by the young, you know, the young team this year. So Stephen Stephen talked briefly last week about a conspiracy theory that Queen City, because they had nothing to lose, nothing to gain, they were going to be the number three seed no matter what, and they did not want to play Tallahassee the week after they already played them. Through the game, showed you nothing, and then we're going to come in here and and play this game uh, in the real way that they would they would take care of the pride so my question is did you see anything out of queen city that you didn't expect today or was it just a matter of tallahassee not executing in the way that you hoped it was execution that was that i'll tell you what that would make qc if he if if coach comes on and says that <laughs> then that would make them the mess he'd be like uh the what's that guy's name on that show that is the master planner makes it out to the presidency? Uh, uh, 
the, the Netflix show, he'd be like House him, of Cards. Mr. House of Cards. Team. Yeah, House of Cards. <laughs> he'd be like that. I've guy. never seen that show. <laughs> so you know, I think what man, to answer your question, no, I don't think that um, we didn't, in fact, see anything today that uh, we didn't expect. Um, you know, we knew that uh, we had to deal with with both on those outside runs. And when you saw both um, make some of those moves and, and, and evade defenders and get some uh, a couple of those players some key blocking the way that he did, we knew we were going to be in for a long night. And then you add that add to the fact that you know they were they were uh, sharp in the passing game. We had people, as you mentioned, in position, but they weren't making plays. So, you know, coach is coach, play is play, ball is ball. Tonight, um, um, we just didn't get the, the players to, to really, really get up there the way they should for a game like this. Frank, after uh, preparing for you in Baltimore, I uh, and I, I cataloged every one of your games, uh, plays and I remember thinking, man, man, they run a cup. You know, there's usually a tight end fade almost on every play. There's out routes paired with the tight end fades. Today, you guys ran a heavy dose of the the corner routes. Did you add more corner routes to this week in anticipation to take advantage of Queen City's non-star corners, or did you just not expect them to play medium to deep cover two, cover three? sets against it um we from the coaching perspective no we didn't do a lot of of adding we we did our due diligence in studying what qcc uh likes to run um what they did last week and and this week and we didn't go do anything special to try to take advantage of um you know say of those corners um what we count on is the, uh, E.T. King being able to make really good reads, um, you know, he has that pedigree, and then being able to make good adjustments so that if, you know, you see something deep, you say, no, I'm not going to take that, and instead you, you dump off to the short pass. And we've got plays that allow him to be able to make those decisions. Um, so, you know, if he did something like that in a previous game, then it was because he, that's what he was simply seeing, even, even when the plays are in. You know, he could go somewhere else. Um, it's just that this game, you know, I think everybody was too hyped, stayed up a little bit too late, and a little step <laughs> slow. And, you know, I mean, when you throw interceptions instead of touchdowns, you know, which was, we had two uh, end zone picks in this game, you know, those 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 just catch up. You, you, you can't overcome those easily. Frank, uh this is my last question for you. You know, you've been in the league for four seasons now, and you've made the playoffs three times, but the, the championship game is that elusive mark uh, for, for the Tallahassee Pride at this point. You know, for a while it was Baltimore. Baltimore's elusiveness was just getting that playoff win. For Tallahassee, you guys have had plenty of playoff wins. You just have not, in, in this setting, been able to find your way into the final two what is how difficult is this and how has queen city now done it for a fourth time like i, I i'm 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 stunned <laughs> well queen city definitely they, that's a great organization a great coaching staff and they have heart they come they they come up with big games at at the right time and so they get all the credit for being able to do it that just shows you how special they really are um, to be able to, to go for four times now. This is definitely a dynasty, and you cannot, don't even dream of taking that away from them. They are showing and improving it, and that's why they probably should be, um, you know, Stephen and his crew, they need to make sure they watch out because this is, this is what QCC does. This is what Queen City does. As far as on our end, you know, we, we're still young. We were close a couple seasons ago, and then... Uh, their coach, GM head, head uh, and owner, decided to go take us completely off track last season with the little experiment that that fell. You know, we fell on our face with it. So I'm going to go the route that Stephen did. You know, Stephen he built on his philosophy and on his team, and look how that's being rewarded. 
you know, they're they're moving forward now. They they made strides last season, but now they're going to the big dance. And that that's a traditionally a really sure way to go about it. So, you know, um, even so, it's not guaranteed, but I think it's a good, you know, Stephen's showing us a good way to don't bail on something that you've got working for you. Instead, try to build on it and be stronger for the next season. Great points, Frank. Uh, you got anything else, James? Yeah, I just want to say congratulations, Frank, on a great season. Um, I, I wish you the best of luck going into next season. I can't wait to see what you guys do. Uh, make those tweaks, and, and you, you're going to have a scary team next year as well, I believe. So good luck to you, and, and great job this year. Oh, yeah. Thank you, sir, and, and congrats to both the teams. We're going to have one heck of a, of a championship game. Either way, QCC could make history if they've been doing it, or um, or you're going to have a great first time win from you know a first time in the in the championship game team. So either way, I'm looking forward to a great game next week. All right, Frank. We'll see you next week. Thanks for the call. All right. All right. Two one zero four seven three eight four two eight here on the post game show. How good is that, man? I mean, the guy just he acts like he didn't even just lose the game. Yeah, I think I couldn't do it. Yeah, I, I, I'd be out the door. I'd be I, at some bar somewhere. I, I probably wouldn't call in. No, that's <laughs> no. I would definitely call in. But I think, you know, Frank, you know that that's how you want your owners, you know, handling situations like that. Nine oh three. You're on the SFL post game show. Duval. Who's Duval? Oh, hey, Duval, that that was rough, man. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say. I'm not sure that the Duval chant is uh, is is really the theme of the evening, but uh, I don't know what the Dallas chant is. What what is the Dallas chant? People have got to be losing their minds because the Roughnecks are not a one and done team like the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> oh, God. Well, first of all, on the Duval, I've loved it ever since I've heard it. I did it last week, um, and uh, and it's a shout out to my man Frank Gooden, class classiest owner in the SFL and, I'm, and I'm, I'm really glad to call him a friend. As far as uh, the chant, it, it, it's all about dot dot here. I don't know if you've heard <laughs> or not. Uh, but that would be the chant that you would hear and you will hear uh, this this upcoming championship game. Uh, so blessed. So happy. I, I know how hard it is to win. I respect every one of the owners that's in this league and, and, and uh to, to be, I'm just really honored to play them. I'm honored to be in the championship game, and uh, it's an opportunity that I don't plan on uh, not taking advantage of uh, to the best of my ability. So to to face a, a dynasty uh, like Queen City is going to be a tall task. Um, I don't know how many home games in the championship game are considered uh, the, where the home team is going to be underdo- uh, the underdogs. We're definitely in that situation facing who is you know like a Bill Belichick of coaching here in the SFL. So we know we have a big task before us, but uh, honored to be where we are now. Dude, I can hear it in your voice how giddy you are over this victory. I mean, this victory must have been, you know, probably the, the sweetest of the season just, just because for so long we were stuck at 13-7, to seven, and, it, and it didn't look like we were ever going to get unstuck. It was going to be a 13-7 final score, uh, and then and then Dallas, they just you, you guys just warm down. And and you know that that goes to really it speaks to to Mighty RX and, and his coaching and his, his amazing team. And um, I, honestly, I went into this game with a lot of confidence. We faced Alaska back in week two. It was probably our best outing, uh, twenty-eight to twelve. Uh, we, we limited them to only field goals, so we thought we had a good chance of limiting their offense despite how well they've been playing as of late. Um, and so we were pretty confident that if, if they had to put the ball in Murdoch Mock's hands, who is a former Dallas quarterback that we understand very well, that we were pretty confident that we could come out of the win at home. Uh, but but uh, being down 13-7 at halftime and how stale the offense looked after that first series, Definitely cause for concern, and, uh, and 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 definitely was was all attributed to what the game plan that Mighty RX is able to, to come up defensively to stop our offense. I think uh, defensive game plan on our part worked 
perfectly. We wanted to limit Beakley as much as we could, and I felt like we really did that. We wanted to put the, the game in, in Mock's hands. I felt like we did that, and it ended up paying off at the end. Uh, but, boy, what a nail-biter, and you're welcome, uh, by the way, for giving you such a great game to commentate. <laughs> well, you definitely, uh, you definitely had us – uh, you definitely had James standing up and uh, and, and and getting after it. Concord uh, c- career high in receptions, and and it wasn't Lashaw. It wasn't Lashaw today specifically, but it was Heath McDaniel Sr., Tika Bell, uh, Julius O'Neal had a nice game. It was it was really just a team effort from your defense. Were you surprised at how efficient? Mock was through three quarters, and, and did it have you nervous, you know, going into the fourth? Uh, nervous, yes. Shocked, no. I mean, studying the last few games by Mock, he's actually been pretty efficient, and surprisingly so, um, based upon what I saw the first part of the season is knowing him as a quarterback, uh, that, that Mighty and his coaching staff have kind of, um, they have they've sheared down what it's down to, to a focus what he does well and what he doesn't and they were able to focus their offense on on his good attributes and uh effectively combining that with a an awesome running game and an awesome rookie runner um and we know what they bring defensively the top defense in the league so you know i i i knew that that i was confident going into the game based on the game plan that i had but i also knew there were chances that uh you know players make big plays and and as a, as a coach, as a coordinator, all I can do is try to put my players in the best position to make plays. And, uh, and, and we did just enough tonight in order to, to get to the championship game. And, and uh, if, I, I, I am absolutely giddy about it. I'm happy for, uh, happy for all of my, my user players who, who, who joined a team that, 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 that won a playoff game last year but, but really got spanked. In the, uh, in the championship game against Louisville. And, uh, and so the rebound this year, I, I really felt like if, I, if we didn't win this championship game, we, it was just a repeat of what we did last year and we weren't growing. And I think my giddiness is, is that we, we, what we're doing we're finally now, I can say that we did better than last year. Steven, I know that it was – I know that you were kind of on the fence, leaning towards no. We left the option open. Um Team owners that commentate the championship are zero and one all time. Sorry, Demond, to have to bring that up. Um, are are are? Do you <laughs> do you? Uh, what what is your true desire here? Do you, is your true desire to buck that trend or to scream at the television in the silence of your own home next week? Uh, it's going to be tough because I'm going to be moving out of the state before the game. Uh, I'll probably cross the border and go into Louisiana. Uh, just to be sure. Uh, no, I don't want to go anywhere. I don't. We we need all the help we can get against Queen City, frankly. So anything that I can do, luck wise, rabbit foot, anything like that, it's all going to be taken advantage of, including staying <laughs> as far away as I can from SFL headquarters during this game. So you're not actually moving. You just don't even want to be in the same state as headquarters on Sunday. Well, you know, maybe, maybe just, you know, I'm trying to trick karma. Maybe they see that I'm moving the TV and a dresser. Maybe, maybe it'll be on my side. <laughs> All right. Well, Demond and I will look forward to calling uh, what will be uh, an incredible matchup on Sunday. Stephen, thanks for the call and uh, good luck. So let me just say this before we go. Okay. Thank James for a wonderful uh, commentating. Uh, his part of the commentating today, and thank you for making the trip. I know it's a long, long drive. I drove two and a half hours uh, up and back uh, this last weekend, and it, I can't imagine driving as far as you did. So, I'm part uh, as part of the SFL and our ownership. I want to just thank you for making that sacrifice for us, and you did such a wonderful job. And, and we're so glad that you're part of the league. Hey, and I, I appreciate the support, and uh, I, I think well, I think it was a nine-hour drive, and you know. I, I loved every second of it because I knew I'd get to come and support, you know, such a great organization uh, like the SFL and, and to be a part of something as great as what you guys have created. So it's an absolute honor and a privilege for me to, to sacrifice that and come down here. To me, I don't even see it that way. I'm just I'm just so stoked to be here and be a part of this that 
I'm beyond grateful. So thank you and thank you to all the other SFL members and thank you to Cam for allowing me to come down and do this. All right, Stephen. Best yeah. of luck Sunday. Thanks for, thanks for the words. I'm sorry. Did you want to say something else? I didn't mean to cut you off. Uh, just one last, just one last thing. I want to, I just want to remind Demond where he's from. Remember, he's from Texas, man. Represent. <laughs> Demond will be non-biased on the call, as he always is, even in his own game when he lost to Queen City. So, um, sorry again, Demond. But uh, <laughs> well, then... <laughs> just tell Demond he can expect a PayPal surprise this week. And we'll see how biased he is. <laughs> <laughs> that is no. That is gonna. You're gonna get flagged for that. We're gonna. The league is going to be uh, sending. The league is gonna be sending something you uh, to you in the mail, um, and it will probably be coming back here with more money in it as a fine. So yeah, make it payable to James Richards, please. <laughs> Sounds good. We're looking forward to next week. Thanks, guys. Wonderful right. job today. All right, guys. There, uh, Stephen. Thank you. Congratulations to Dallas. Uh, you guys definitely put together an awesome season. Uh, you know, really good, good ownership groups from all the teams, really good coaching staff from all the teams. Uh, Dallas had a great game plan today. Uh, and, and also, you know, Alaska had a great game plan today. It was just amazing all, all the way around. Our last call, 954, Max Paul, you're on a post game show. Oh, thanks for having me on, Cam. And, uh, James, it was great having you as color for the, tonight. Um, wow, this one hurts. It still hurts. Hours after. Yeah, you, ah, you, you, you but, go ahead. But I will say, uh, first and foremost, I want to say, you know, congratulations to Dallas, to Steve Molnax, Mac Wavy, and the rest of those guys down there. They put together a heck of a game plan to kind of uh, take away what we do best and force our. Uh, the other facets, the other facets of our team to kind of, you know, either step up or, you know, step out, kind of, and uh, you know, they were able to, you know, pull out the victory. Um, you know, we we, we kind of had an idea of how they wanted to attack us because of the previous uh, matchups we had and and how they've been, you know, stringing these wins at the end of the season. So we, you know, we kind of get catered our game plan that way. That's why Big Sexy might not have been a factor as much in the passing game because we had a more focus to make sure that. Mike Davis going to be a factor in the run game to kind of force, you know, second and long, third and longs, and then to kind of put him in an advantageous position to, you know, for a defensive back to make a play on the ball because the rocks take longer to develop and stuff like that. So, you know, for, for the better part of, uh, you know, three quarters, it looks good, and then it all fell apart. <laughs> Max, your game plan today was – Phenomenal. Just phenomenal. Yeah. It's yeah. great work. It's excellent. The the strategy that you implemented and the way that the team executed, especially in the first half and even into the third quarter uh, before things started to break down, was tremendous. So, with that said, why at the end, in, at the end of the day, why didn't it work? Any theories? Um, simple. We didn't put enough points on the board. Uh, you, you can have a lead. You can have a lead all you want. You know when you uh, what's that saying? When you got a man down, you got to kick him in the throat, something like that. Uh, that you can't let him get back up. You let him get back up, it's going to be a fight again. If you want to win the fight, you end it. And we didn't end it. And that's uh, that's as easy as I could put it. With with that uh, being said, you know because defensively, it's not a surprise that you guys. Uh, played as well as you did, but overall game plan, that it was just a phenomenal game plan. And like you said, you didn't put up enough points. Going into next season, is there how, – how do you plan – can you give us an insight on, you know, what you may change about the build of your team? Is there a position that you're going if to you invest to heavily in? Going into next season, I'm blowing it up, James. I'm blowing it up. Going into next season I, – I, I said last season, if, I don't know if Karen remembers, in the – when, uh, in, in the interviews we did for, you know, for expansion bid that I said, I told Cam, every season I'm going to come with some fresh, some new. I don't want to be the same, you know, hey, oh, the, this bill works, so I'm just relying on this bill from here on out. No, 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 no. Whether the bill is successful or not, I'm all about stretching myself, stretching my players, you know, trying to push them to the best of their ability, and then, you know, just to give something 
the viewers and the league something different to look at, something different to put on the field, and you know, for, so that way you can't just. There's no all reliable. So I'm blowing it up, both offensively, blowing up the build on defense. I'm blowing up the build on defense as well. And I kind of have an idea where I'm going. Will I divulge these things? No, just know that I will be running with the generic in my defensive backfield somewhere. Just, and then offensively, we'll see. Just, I, I'm blowing everything up. I, I want to touch on Evan Carroll. He had a good start to his regular season, sort of fell off during the regular season. His postseason was outstanding. Today he had nine tackles. Two passes defended, two interceptions, and he was the man that blocked the punt. What a what a postseason for that guy! I'm sure he's coming back. Oh yeah, he's coming back. Uh, he matter of <laughs> fact, um, uh, uh, Cam, I don't know how much you're paying attention to our team chat. You know about our face of the franchise competition right. and the winners. Okay, well, the winners of that competition will both be, you know, their fees if they have any fees will be taken care of by the storm. Correct. Uh, Big sexy was a winner. Beakley was the winner, so they've taken care of and they'll be returning in some way, shape, or form to the storm. Uh, don't know if they'll be returning in the position that they currently are, but they have no worries. They're covered that way. Um, Evan kind of played his way into the star cornerback role, so he'll be switching sides. And then after that, we got to figure out what we want to do on defense because we're not going to run the same DB right this year, even though, even though it was the number one defense in the league. We're going to switch it up again. And, and, and oh, by the way, uh, don't mean to change topics, kind of. This loss hurts because our last season, as the defensive coordinator for Baltimore, we played Dallas. We had Dallas dead to rights. We're down oh. four. We're down four driving, and then the, the legend, Dazzo, threw a pick in the red zone that killed us. I, I remember I that. I remember that game well because that game we set a record. We had 18 tackles for losses. Yeah, <laughs> some ridiculous. So yeah, that... yeah, yeah. L- losing to Dallas to Steven. Steven, big up to you. I respect you. I don't like you, but I respect you. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I had not even I had not even put those pieces together coming into that matchup. Uh, that yeah that. That's uh, that's brutal, and Alaska and Dallas is most definitely going to be on the schedule for season nine. There's no doubt about that. Un- unfortunately, or fortunately, depending upon the way you look at it, Max. Um, oh well, hey, I'm, I we 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 take on all challengers. We don't back down from anybody. We'll do our due diligence and our homework, and whatever build we come up with to run to run into in season nine. Bring them all. We'll, we'll be ready. Mighty, you're a part of the SFL podcast crew. My last question to you is. Um, you know, what's your initial thoughts and, and breakdown? I can't wait to hear the podcast this week. I'm sure you guys are going to put something together. But what is your breakdown, uh, initial breakdown of this championship game matchup? Queen City playing their fourth different franchise in the title game. And this time, Dallas is the challenger. If, well, okay, this is the thing. Uh, I'll give you a quick, a quick, quick, quick breakdown. Queen City hasn't had an issue scoring points this season. The issue was a defensive issue where they couldn't stop a nosebleed, uh, running faucet, whatever thing you want to go with. Um, today, they put on a show, at least defensively, especially in the red zone where, you know, Tallahassee got yards. They were moving between the 20s easily. But when it came to have to put the ball in the end zone to score touchdowns, they were, they were forcing the issue, and it was resulting in turnovers, which in turn, Queen City turned the points their way. Um, Dallas is the type of team, they don't give up big anything. If you're going to work your way down field, you're going to do it by, you know, five, ten-yard increments, five, ten-yard increments. If Queen City can get both loose on the perimeter to have, you know, have to have, you know, these, the generic linebackers and the lower-tier DBs having to tackle, you know, Marcus Allen, that might be problematic. Now, if they could keep them corralled inside the tackles, then the game will be closer and more to their liking where Matt Crazy can have time back there to kind of pick away at, you know, the, the, the non-star DB, you know, cornerbacks that are on the outside, especially having to stop 
um, Conk and, and Esco and Dobbs and the you know the, the you know plethora the plethora that, of the toys that he got to deal with. Um, but let's not forget about Queen City's pass rush. They have invested heavily in that D line, so that could be problematic as well if if they can't get Mike Davis going and sitting in third and second and long, third and long. So, you know, Mac Wavy got to sit there, pat the ball, and then you know, big 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 uh, big end. And the rest of the guys get back there and start to cause havoc. So it's going to be interesting. I'll do my due diligence to give a, a more thorough breakdown for the podcast. But that's how that's what my initial thoughts are, at least for right now. All right, Mighty. Well, we can't wait for the podcast. Can't wait for the title game. We'll see you there. Great season. Came up short. But uh, for an expansion team, Alaska definitely did its work uh, this year. And uh, and we'll see you around. Mighty, uh owners meetings, owner voting tomorrow. All sorts of good, all sorts of busy stuff for everyone uh, who's not still playing to keep uh, keep their eyes and ears on. So, uh, thanks for all you do for the league, and we'll catch you later. Thanks, Cam. Y'all have a good night now. Yeah, great stuff out of Alaska. All right. Well, James, I think that's about a wrap for tonight here on the air. The final score: Queen City forty-five, Tallahassee twenty-seven. And in our earlier game, Alaska 13, Dallas 14, as the SFL playoffs are down to two. The Dallas Roughnecks and the Queen City Corsairs going toe-to-toe Sunday, May 7th. The uh, official kickoff time will be announced later this week. James, thank you so much for coming all this way uh, to do the call. Hope you had a good time, and hope you had a good time out there listening uh, as well any final thoughts yeah i just uh really enjoyed the opportunity so thank you to everybody and you know uh, i'm looking forward to doing this again at some point and uh you know i'm just really happy to see the sfl growing and and i'm just proud to be a part of it so thanks everybody queen city in dallas sunday may 7th in eight days right here on youtube from the sfl studios in denton texas good night everybody